down to the bus. Cue the video. <laughs> and now it's time for Let's Grow Bully. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice word. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. Happy Easter, everybody. Jason here with the Beer Money Pulling Team. Uh, tonight, we're talking super farm tractor pulling. Uh, easily one of the most popular classes in the country. Kurt Paulson is a friend of mine. He said, Jason, I'm going to bring on uh, Dennis Zubrod and Natasha Curtin. And Dennis was great friends, kind of the right-hand man of Eddie Hopp back in the day. Eddie has passed us. He's watching this podcast in heaven tonight. Natasha is his daughter, and we're going to tell that story. So yesterday, I made a post on Facebook that said, we're going to talk about the start of the super farm class. I got 15 phone calls today from 15 different states saying, no, they started the super farm <laughs> class. So I said, that's fine. We're going to tell the Eddie Hop story tonight, and we're excited to have them. So at this time, I would like to go from left to right. Mike, you introduce yourself. Larry, introduce yourself. Matt, you introduce yourself. Tasha and Kurt and uh, Dennis, you introduce yourself, and then away we go. So here we go. Mike, you're first, buddy. Yep. Well, welcome to Let's Grow Pulling tonight, guys. Like uh, Jason said, it's Easter week, and I am live on location from booth 3194. I had to look it back up here where you can come look at. No, I'm just kidding. I got a green screen in front of me because I am uh, in a different location tonight. Uh, Mike Idle, I do a little announcement for the Outlaws. I work for uh, Beer Money or work with Beer Money Pulling Team. And uh, you, work, uh, you, work openly, for me. you work for me. It's okay to say. for you. you. Friendship dues. <laughs> I don't, Larry's the only one who doesn't get paid. I just want to be totally honest with everybody. Honestly. But uh, big fan of Super Farms. The first time I ever watched Super Farms, I was 14 years old. Dad signed me out of baseball practice so we could sneak up to Oskaloosa, Iowa, watch Super Farms for the first time. Uh, fell in love immediately. It's a speed class for 150 feet, and then it's a torque class. And we're going to see what that motor is made of with those 640 cubes on the back half of it. So I can't wait to hear how this thing got started in Iowa. See if they ever pulled at Oski. You know, I I heard the part about introduce yourself. I didn't hear the part about a seven about a seven minute monologue. No offense, but Jason Jason's right. I'm in charge of comic relief. I'm kind of the resident tech guy and historian, and I'm drinking a cold train energy drink because I, unlike anybody else on the screen, I take, I'm taking care of the sponsors. Anyway, my name is Larry Richwine. I'm very polite. I'm very kind, I'm a very caring human being, and uh, I make friends everywhere I go. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Well, if it's not deeper and higher enough yet, here we are. Folks, my name is Matt Hart. I'm glad to be back almost every Monday now. Uh, we got through the winter season of things. Uh, excited to be uh, on board tonight. Uh, we got a stormy, stormy night out there, so it's good night to be inside talking tractor pulling. Thanks for having me, guys. Hi, I'm Natasha Curtin. <laughs> I'm Kurt Paulson. Dennis Zubrod. All right. Welcome, guys. They don't you guys don't quite have the monologue figured out yet, though, but no, that's okay. No. We're, we're, we're I, I don't do it. This, so. <laughs> we don't right. look live all the time. <laughs> so Kurt Paulson's a friend of mine. We chat a lot on you know, text, call each other, stuff like that. Usually nine o'clock at night when we're both drinking or later, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> don't um, don't struck me. <laughs> Kurt said, hey, Jason, you know, Eddie Hopp and Dennis Zubrod are kind of my mentors, my polling heroes, legends. And Eddie Hopp started the super farm class. And I don't know, you want to say Western Iowa or Nebraska. I don't know where what geographic thing you want to claim. And um, let, let's tell that story. So I said, hey, let's set that up. So Natasha, Eddie Hopp was your dad. Give, yeah. Tell us who Eddie Hopp was as your dad and as a puller. And then we're going to move over to Dennis and start talking about he owned Central Fuel Injection. Is that right? He yeah. did. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. No. Yeah, he did. He owned it. And then when he passed away, he was in a partnership with a, with another guy um, in Esterville, Iowa. And when he passed away, then he got the shop. I didn't know that until. <laughs> yeah. And so I started my own then. So then, yeah, Dennis Zubra now has his own shop. 
Central you, Plains. You have a you have a shop today, Dennis? Yeah, yeah. It's called Central Plains Diesel Service. Okay, and who do you, what do you do? Diesel pumps, turbos, injectors. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Who's sitting well, behind I you mean, guys? So yeah, That's so tell us how do we how do we Kurt, how do we do this? I mean, I got pictures, I got pictures to put up on the screen that you guys have sent me. Um well, let's uh, talk about your dad's tractors. Sure. First, he built with uh, what we Kevin Chambers with Kevin Chambers in about 1979. They built a 1650 Oliver, and Eddie Hop was good buddies with Ed Dreesen, so they got parts and a little bit of help from Eddie Dreesen. But they made Eddie Dreesen like an implement dealer or a puller or what was he, Dennis? Eddie Dreesen had the silver streak. Okay. Did you send me that picture? I don't think I did. Okay. I have it. I can actually. Yeah, send it to me on Messenger if you don't mind. So. Of silver streak? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was the first tractor they built. Mm -hmm. It's and, called Anticipation. Yep. 1650 Oliver Diesel. Uh, then they sold it. Your dad got sick. With cancer and I started working for Ed in about 1987 in February and he pulled it through 87 and I think he sold it in 88 then he uh, had cancer gotten remission and he said if I beat this Dennis we're gonna build a, a real tractor <laughs> so he got better and we built a 966 called black magic it was black and blue, blue yeah because that's how his body felt when he was going through treatment is what he told me and then after that we built another 966 with a bigger motor <clears throat> and at this time we were pulling with the nebraska bush pullers in the tri-state <clears throat> pulling association which was uh iowa nebraska okay, south yeah. dakota <clears throat> minnesota we pulled in there sometimes mm -hmm. so it was all these little associations and we you know we kept getting bigger turbos and we got to the point where we had like a three in and three out turbo and one of ed's goals was always to pull at hinton iowa so if you're from northwest iowa or Northeast Nebraska, that was a big one around here. Yeah. And the Sp Clay County Fair and Spencer. Yeah. And so in about probably 94, uh, Ed started talking with Dennis Goodwin, who was uh, president of the IPPA, or, he, or at least he was on the board, I'm not sure. And them guys were kind of short on tractors at that time. And Ed's the one who um got them talked in to this letting all these guys from nebraska iowa south dakota minnesota with the smaller turbos pull because all they had was a super stock and a pro stock with big turbos so that's that's how it came to be and that's how it got started around here and i talked to alan andrews the other day and he says 95 was the first year that we pulled with the NTPA or the ITPA also. For Super Farm? For Super Farm, yeah. That's well, we got right. Larry Richwine on tonight. So, Larry, what, how do you remember those days, those early Super Farm days? Does that sound good? Uh, yeah, it would have been in that 93 or 4 when they first came to play. Uh, 95 was probably the first big year, if you will, of uh, Super Farm involvement. But... Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a long-standing class, and then they made it a grand national class, which mm -hmm. none of the other guys, yeah. the light pros or limited pros or any of that, made it to grand national status. But there was enough of them that they made it a grand national class. It's a very successful class still at our state mm -hmm. and regional level. Mm -hmm. How long was it? How long did they they kind of take to have that transition, Larry, to go from a, a regional uh, regional level class before they came into the Grand National? You said maybe 93, 94, they came on at regional level. When would they right. be, become a GN class? 
Boy, I don't know. I'd have to ask somebody that's more of a historian than me, but I'd say probably no later than 1980. It probably before that, because uh, we needed another class to run at the Bowling Greens and the Tomas and places like that. And they plugged that in there as a Grand National class. And there was enough of them mm. that a lot of them wanted to follow the Grand National Circuit and sure. agreed to do it. That's that's what actually uh, got it going as a Grand National class. But it's still a Grand National class, yeah. So when I'm you had that produced tonight, but here's here's a picture of that 1650 Oliver. Uh, Tim Blankisper sent me one, and then Natasha sent me one. So Natasha sent me this picture yesterday. You, does anybody recognize Oliver. where this would have been? And this would have been like a hot farm, Dennis, or what class would this have been in? Yeah, that would have been your local. Well, that is probably a tri-state tractor pull. Uh, you know, it was a little pulling association. Uh, when they first started, you could have a 3LM 466 turbo was the biggest one you could have. And I'm going to say that was probably in Rock Valley, Iowa, maybe. Cool. That is super cool. And that is really be, cool. That's got to be the early, early 80s because it's got a wood uh, nose piece on it yet yeah, that that uh, front cast piece was made out of wood and painted red. <laughs> oh my gosh. Could we uh, yeah. we'll save on weight, right? Let's not tell our safety yep. director yep. that, right? Very <laughs> uh, the frame was from Eddie Dreesen. It was one of his leftovers from the Silver Streak. They uh, got a lot of parts and help from Ed on that. Uh, 450 Ruse Master? Yep, 450 Ruse Master, a little uh, 3LM 353 Turbo. And it was a good sure. running tractor. I think he won the points a uh, couple of years with that. He pulled the 55 and the 75 with that tractor. Carol, Nebraska. Oh, Carol, Nebraska. Okay. Just leaning in and giving it to her. Love it. Love it. And all the trucker That's hats awesome. in the back, too. What, yes, sir. Dennis, if you were to predict <laughs> horsepower back then what would you think that tractor would have been at oh i don't know probably a couple hundred yeah that's awesome, <laughs> that awesome. but it took a lot of work on that tractor because about every other pull we'd go to the oil filter would be full of filings and we'd have to pull the pan and and uh oh that's from Dunlop. And pull the no, pan. Fred, Fred's watching in Dunlap, Natasha. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, I know who Fred is. I just didn't know where. It is. <laughs> yeah, this picture. This is from. This was in Inwood, Iowa, and Tim okay. Blank is sent this picture in. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, Tim. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we'd have to pull the pan, find which rod bearing was going out, emery cloth, the crank, and put different sure. bearings in it. And the camshaft used to break periodically because it just had a stock cam. <laughs> but it ran again for what it so was. So where did this tractor go then? Uh, he it's sold it to a guy time. in Illinois. And his last name was Plow, but it was spelled P-L-O-U-G-H. But okay. I don't remember the guy's first name. Hmm. That's pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good for a guy with gray hair. <laughs> decades ago, yeah, that's that's doing pretty good. He still remembered how to spell at it least, too. So. At, at right? least you have hair. At least you have hair. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Pete. Larry just, you know, he parts his right down the middle. Oh. That's all. <laughs> so Zoom hey, knows a lot because I was sixteen. Well, I was sixteen I, when my dad passed away. I was like going to be a freshman in high school. So, but I mean, I was there and I remember him just being amazing and everything. And I know a lot of people that um, thought he was a pretty good guy and sometimes hear about, you know, hear about him here and there, but I appreciate Kurt bringing it up and wanting to talk about it. It's nice. No, it's great. Again, if you're just joining us, we've got quite a few people watching tonight. A lot of historians. This is a fun show. Normally we're talking about the next poll and kind of mm. have a little bit of a break before the pollers championship. And, uh, just came off the Mac Trailer Winter Nationals, and this is perfect timing for us to uh, to talk about this. Next Monday night, I'm going to be live in Farley, sitting in Jason Round's shop. I'm going to do Jason Round at 7, and then um, the Simon Boys at 8 o'clock. So that'll be fun as well. But really, to tell the history, because back then, you guys, I mean, social media has just spoiled us for just instant information, Natasha and Dennis and Kurt. And we all know that on here, and 
Obviously, Beer Money Pulling Team has been a big part of that um, social media the last 10, 15 years in pulling. But back then, it was just a puller magazine, right, Dennis? Like, yeah. how did you know where to buy stuff? How did you How did you guys sell stuff? It was just, just a different world then. Yeah, but Ed took great pride in getting his own stuff built. And, you know, anybody could go to Hypermax and buy parts. If they had well, enough. not anybody. You needed money. Just, just yeah, yeah. You had the money. <laughs> if you had the money, anybody could go to Hypermax and buy parts. But he prided himself on, you know, making his own stuff or finding his own guys to make stuff. And he is one of the very first guys that ever took a head to Dan Harry. In and Harry's Red heads. Head. Yeah. Yeah. Whole, yeah. I've spent and, some. I've spent some money at Harry's heads the last ten years. <laughs> and Dan Harry did a head for us and the valves were a little too tight. So it stuck the valve the first time and Ed, we just took it off. Ed took it back down there and Dan said, well, I'll, you know, I don't, I, I don't really want to do this. And Ed said, no, it's okay. <laughs> you know, let's just figure out what we need to do. And so Dan loosened up the, the valve guide clearance and worked sure. like a charm. That's back when Hypermax was basically taking parts that you could buy off the shelf and uh, at International, grind the numbers off of it, and then sell it to you as a specialty item. I uh, see. <laughs> they weren't they weren't hybrid, they weren't high tech, they they were just something that was for an engine bigger or a different application, and he'd grind the number off of it. I okay. mean, Jerry Lagod's kind of a friend of mine, but that's how he did it. And the guys like Bill Voorhees we had on last week would buy one and then go find out what the heck it was in the parts books and then sell it to his friends. And Jerry Lagarde and Hypermax didn't care for that. <laughs> yeah, I bet they didn't, Neil. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah. So somebody's watching on YouTube said, we were broke, but we had a good time pulling against people with Eddie's help. I think that's what that means. So cool. I'm not sure who that is. With Ed's help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube so user, let us know who you are. Yeah. yeah, their tractor was either broke or they had no money. Well, either one, that's what broke means. Um, yeah, it's and, both, right? One because of the other. You know, we, we worked on a lot of people's pulling pumps and turbos and injectors. And, yeah, we tried to keep it reasonable, you know. Didn't have to make it all off the one guy. Um, Kim Jocelyn's watching from Holstein, Iowa tonight. Thanks for watching, Kim. Yeah, guys, ask some questions. Tell some stories. This It's, it's interactive when you tell your stories. When you ask your questions to Dennis or to Kurt or Natasha, again, we're telling the Eddie Hop story tonight, kind of the house super farms got started out in there. Um, my famous Dennis Goodwin story, I, my favorite one, Dennis of all time. And I love, I'm really good friends with Matt. Uh, we're going to go pulling together this mm. summer. <laughs> I saw a sticker on their trailer that said, we don't tractor pull to make friends. We bring our own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was on the old butt hut, uh, their trailer that they had. And I yeah, said, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> I fell in love with the good ones ever since then. And Dennis can give, he can give it. Yeah. He can give yeah, it hard. Yeah. People yeah, either, can. people either love that man or hate that man. Like not kind of <laughs> hate, like hate him. And uh, it's funny and he don't care. Uh, I just, I love it. I love it. So. Uh, Cole Lundell says, Eddie was a big help with my dad's 806 when he made the switch to a peep pump. So they're a cool deal. Mm -hmm. Cole Lundell, checking in tonight. Love All to right, so. The mechanical pumps, too. That's cool. I, got, um, oh, I was going to ask a quick question, too. When they were first starting out, how many how many tractors were they seeing in the class, you know, in mm -hmm. those first couple of years? I mean, obviously, Super Farm now, when you hear it's going to be pulling somewhere, you're like, okay. We're going to have a lot of hooks tonight or this afternoon. When it was first starting out, what, what were you seeing? What, talk about that a little, if you don't mind. Well, everybody wanted to pull. When it, when uh, ITPA picked it up, you know, we had, there was probably 15, 20 tractors at every pull because you'd have all the guys from Nebraska that wanted to pull and all the guys from Iowa and South Dakota. So it was always a big class because all the little associations around here all kind of had the same three in three out rule at that time. But they're like everybody else. They wanted a bigger stage. You know, they were tired of going to the same old little towns and, and so they would come from all over to, 
too. That three by three back then was that just like a whole set, or do you, what kind of charger was it? It didn't matter what kind it was, as long as it was three in and three out. Okay, right. and, and that that's still the the to this day standard setup. So that's neat to hear because you hear about pulling classes, and a lot of times things develop and change as competition and breakage and money come into play. You know, a lot of these new single charger classes quickly went component and whatnot. So the the the, the two big things for me in Super Farm that really make it so able to sink your teeth into is big cubes smaller charger so you kind of hear the three by three and that's kind of your standard go-to and super farm so it's neat that that's been with it since it began cube limit was that always a 640 spot or was that not really an issue or when did that kind of when did that kind of come into the rule book for the class well larry you probably know more about that but i don't think that yeah, was that, the right way the cubic inches was everywhere I mean, mm. you, you had some groups that were 5'10", some groups, that, you know, but they I don't know how they decided on 640. I mean, I was there and had to write it down, but I don't remember what spawned that. I think that was the biggest cubes they had at the time. Sure. And mm -hmm. three, three inch in and three inch out. And then they specified the map groove or no map groove. And there for a while, NTPA, we had to take them apart and put a lead seal on them to make sure they had the right guts in them. And Mike, it looks like it hasn't come far from that three in, three out, but those turbos today are putting out a whole lot more air than they used to. Sure. But, uh, but what makes it you know. so fun is is they've got these, you know, you you can run these, you know, they're not the six eighties that the that the ten thousand pound pro stock guys run, but they're big cubic inch motors. We're not talking a five oh four or five forty like they have in the super stock. But it's such a limiting factor with that smaller turbo compared to a six and a half inch Weimer or something like that. So on the second half of the track, you've got to have almost, I mean, there's not a lot of forced air coming in compared to what some of those other guys, the four ones or the five O's or the six fives. Uh, and that's where you hear that wallering brute force. You can hear a super farm because it sounds like a tractor working in the field. And on the back half of that class or the back half of that, uh, back half of each run that's where they get really really fun so the fact that they started three inch they've remained true to three inch that's to me what's always made that class so unique and that's the the neat driving factor in the entertainment value of it don't take this the wrong way michael even though you have a virtual screen behind you but that's the spectator and the announcer in you talking would you guys agree with me <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry the whole reason for the uh, I'm just I'm just stating facts. That's Yo, no, no, I love it. <laughs> it. Yeah, well, hush for a minute. I'm not done. That's what brought the map groove into place because it's supposed to keep the turbo from stalling. Yeah, throw me under the bus. I don't care. It's <laughs> greasy under here. Anyway, but that's what the map groove does is keep that turbo from stalling in what you think is rising, grooving at the other end of the track. <laughs> but uh, there's, it's like anything else. It started off that way, and it did stay true to the three-inch but there's virtually nothing in those engines today that would, so what do you would guys, work. What do you guys think the difference in RPMs is now, like, Zub, when you guys were running it compared to today? Well, your smaller cubic inch motors would run a higher RPM. Like, what would you leave the line at with Blackmagic? Uh, well, Ed, he was kind of uh, picky about how hard you left the line because you didn't think you had to stand on it too hard <laughs> unless in one of the one of the first times he told me to you go out there and stand on it as hard as you can uh we were pulling against norm caban and norm missed his weights oh, and he came you know, up on the tractor and he says i don't care what rpms you come out <laughs> of just you know make sure you beat him so i stood on it <laughs> Until it got up to 5,700 and I let the clutch out. Oh. And as and soon you, as I got up, like he crawled up there and he goes, what did you leave the line at? He was <laughs> 700. And he just, <laughs> but he twist, was, yeah, the, twist the tail. Twist the tail and let it go, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's there's the difference between letting the clutch out and that clutch pushing you out of the seat. My goodness, that's rolling. Well, back then, it would have been pushing you out of the seat, I'm guessing. So, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, left leg, leg on him. Back then. <laughs> hey, hey Schultz, I was going to say. Yeah. Ask you what the positive to a double disc spring clutch is versus a slipper. <laughs> you can pull start it in the pits when it won't start. That's right. There you go. 
<laughs> but our, our <laughs> factory used to go down to 3,500. Okay. Um, okay. okay, so Tim Blankisper sent me this picture. Thank you, Tim, for all your help tonight with this. So uh, let's see here. This is Dennis on the Black Magic. Uh, do you recognize that, Dennis, at all, that, that spot? Well. Like that, how we did that? We all just leaned in. <laughs> You have the red helmet on? Is it a yeah. red helmet? Yeah. I get a red helmet. Yep, that's me. That looks like it's <laughs> in Wood, Iowa. Yep. I think that's what he said, too. Yep. Yeah. Were there okay. really, really short short people in that trailer watching through the holes, or were that hard? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was <laughs> really what the deal was with the semi-trailer. Uh, yeah. That was a VIP seating, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah, that's the box seating for the sponsorships. Yeah. So, and Tim says okay. this is Eddie's other black tractor, which Mark Gamrid. I talked to Mark this morning. Did he's you? still and it's still running with United Polars of Minnesota. So he was excited that his tractor was going to get talked about tonight on the podcast. So he's pretty pumped about that. Yeah. They're, yeah. Yeah. They're great people. Mark. What did he say? He goes, "Well, I'm going to tell you my side of the story." And I said, "Well, I'm walk at 8:58 a.m. He called me. I'm walking in to meet with a realtor at 9 a.m. How long is this going to take?" He said, "15 minutes." He goes, call me today. I'll be driving all day. And I never, I was on the phone all day. I never did get a chance to call him. So Mark, we'll have to have you on the show some night too and do that. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I got quite a few wheels. questions here. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to rip through these here. Um, and again, just keep bringing in. We're talking with Natasha Curtin, the daughter of Eddie Hop, Dennis Zumbred, his best friend and business partner and Cohart and tractor puller and Kurt Paulson, just some guy who showed up. Yeah. <laughs> He's still That's here. how I treat my friends, by the way. So it's, all good. it's okay. <laughs> Larry knows. Let's see here. Did uh, Eddie? Did you ever pull in New Vienna, Iowa? Or I'm yeah. sorry, not Eddie. That Eddie's in heaven. Dennis, did you ever pull in? Yeah, New Vienna, we went to New Vienna one time. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. And it was with the Black Magic Magnum. It was probably '96. That would have been one of the last, that was probably the last time he, yeah, the last 95 or 96. There it is. We would, the Magnum. we would try things and then we'd go far away and try them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Ed Oyce was looking for a new stage. We used to pull up in Minnesota a lot too. Yep. I remember that. Do you guys recognize that grandstand by any chance? Yeah, we were looking at it before. Is it Mobile? It's not no, Mobile. It's not Mobile. Mobile has maybe, more of a... maybe Pierce, Nebraska, maybe. Or if somebody knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Natasha, you, know. Natasha, I think you sent me this picture. I did. Okay. So. Yep. It looked to me it looked like it was Mobile, but like Zub and I were saying, uh, Mobile has more of the upper, like there's more of a wall there. And then the um I'm gonna share my screen really quick and then Eddie I is it the is it the don't ask tractor today owned by uh, the hearts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. John Hoffman got it from Hops, correct? Yeah, yeah. John got it. Named it Mark for Mark, Mark 50. fifty. Yeah, turned it red, right? Yeah, yeah. I should have got some pictures from John. I didn't. That's right. Um, yeah. Um, That's it today. Is yeah. that the one now? This would have been um what's his name for a while, Larry? Um Salamines? Kentucky. Wow. John said it went to Kentucky and then to Michigan. Does that sound right? Kentucky then to Michigan. Yeah, Salambine had it. Yeah, this that's, been, that's where it went. What'd Salambine call it? Ryan Salambine when he owned it. Um uh, and it was it know. would it was dominant. Dominant, dominant, dominant. So that's a, that's when all the I mean, Michigan water jokes used to come out all the time. In the super fun. I need to drink more energy drink to think of it. I can't think of it. <laughs> my dino, Ryan dinoed my hot farm back in 2012 or 13. Gary Schulte took it over there for me. And I'm trying to remember. And maybe Michigan, I swear. It doesn't so, matter. But I'm just trying there's to some people saying together. Hunt. Is that right? Darren Hunt? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There you go. Way to go. There Way you to go. go, Facebook followers. You're doing a good job out there. <laughs> Making me look smart. I just learned to read tonight. It's kind of exciting. It's going to save on my cable bill. Look at this. Oh, I believe I believe John Hoffman sold, I believe it was called The Real Green. He had a 1650 Oliver, or 1800 Oliver that he got rid of and then bought that Black Magic Magnum. Okay. Kyle Hoffman. Kyle Hoffman's an Alice Chalmer guy, if I know for sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure many watching have had a pump or turbo built by Ed. 
We have a D21 still running those. Holy cow. How cool yeah, is that? Yeah, we worked on their stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Parker, I think Jeff's from Ohio, has some pro stocks yep, now. He is. He um, is. Definitely late 70s, no roll cage treaded tires, but it didn't matter. We started going in 76, NTPA Grand Nationals in Toma. Before the, that's back when Larry was skinny. I didn't say that out loud. Before that, <laughs> when we were in 4-H, we sold bottles of knee-high. What the hell is knee-high? Soda. A soda. It's like grape soda. Okay. You never you never watched the uh, mass show? Radar I always have. had to have a great grape knee-high. Is that uh, the Come little on. feller from Iowa? Um, what was his name? Uh, yeah, Radar. Radar. Yeah, before yeah, that, that was Coltrane Energy, Coltrane Energy before Coltrane Energy is what that was. <laughs> yeah. In the pits, I met Art Arfons, and he had jet power plants. Still watching this day, only from Port Ritchie, Florida. God bless all that make the big ball roll. Here you go, Jeff. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Mike Bowman's checking in from, he says, what's crack a lacking from Ontario, Canada? <laughs> Found out he's going to be a dad today. Wow, the show's getting more. We're announcing babies. <laughs> I was waiting for something scary to come behind that. You ever see those things on the internet where someone announces that and uh, like, yep, I'm going to be an uncle too. It's like, uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, okay. These are some, yeah, these are some big time super farm names I remember from the day. No, Dan no. Ground, yeah. Mama Bink, Ed and Dennis built super farm fuel systems and turbos for us for years. I, so this is somebody watching on a Facebook group. We're live on eight different platforms right now. And mm. for whatever reasons, Facebook users don't register in the group. So I'm not sure who that is, but they can type their name in. Uh, Terry Mommen is watching from Correctionville, Iowa. Sounds like a place, good place for a prison. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's actually only eight miles from here. so yeah. Terry has a little alcohol burning cock shut. Yeah, I thought I recognized that name. Okay, that makes sense now. Darren Heat was asking where to find the Bill Voorhees video. And we, that was last week. We had Bill on, right, Larry? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. we did, yeah. Well, I just put the link into our Let's Grow Pulling podcast. Uh, okay, I don't know all the ins and outs of the tractors, but I knew us kids had the job many times of getting the truck tractors and pickup trucks sparkling for the pulls. It was a family affair for us, and we all took pride in what our dad deemed as his hobby. I'm going to have to go out. Uh, Matt or Mike, will you hit the Facebook group? Sounds like um, maybe my sister or something put that. That's what it says here. Yeah, I am Eddie's oldest daughter. We did, we did right exactly here. that. We had to go wash the tractor, and we had to... You had to wash the pickup. Had to wash the pickup yeah. and everything, you know. Hey, Matt. Matt, will you go to the beer money pulling team group and see who's making these comments on the live? You bet. Because I think they're watching in the group and not the page. And that's fine. But the, I have the a group... question. Now, did, did you wash the tractor or did you wash the tractor? Because <laughs> I'm a Hoosier. I, I, you are, I, I'm a Hoosier, which is a Greek I, I word meaning redneck. And, and we wash stuff around here. We wash no, that's it. my sister talking. Okay. W A R H. Yeah. Yep. I remember my dad noted the turbo on his fourteen sixty six one night in All Sester, South Dakota. This is like geography tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we went down to Eddie's the next Monday, and he built us a hybrid ELM at the three LM time, late eighties time frame. I think. Now that's cool stories. Travis cool Stein. Story. It's S T E N E. Yeah. Travis Steen. Yeah. Steen. There we go. I knew I'd say it wrong. Yep. <laughs> Morgan says he has that video. Yeah, we still do work for him, or I do. Yeah. Do you? Where's your shop at, Dennis? Lee Mars, Iowa. Is that they have an outlaw pool, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah I announced or I ran outlaw TV there. That's the place with the pork chops on the sticks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Are they on the sticks? Larry, <laughs> in a glove. In a glove. In a glove. No, the glove. Larry, Larry, you and I need to go and have the food channel follow us there because it would be fun. <laughs> Larry, I'm telling you, the pork chops on the glove. I had Dave Nelson's well, kid with me last year, and Kaya. I don't know about TV. TV. At Sandwich, <laughs> Illinois, they have pork chop on a steak. On a steak? Uh, which reminds me of, you know, Jeff Dunham's uh, with the yep. jalapeno I, stick. I kill you. They, I do. It doesn't come with a glove, though. It's just the pork chop on a steak. Yeah, our uh, DeKalb County pork producers are pretty proud of what they make out there. We might have another podcast idea of doing all the best food at, at Tractor Poles because – uh, you know, Jason just I put really, a video out about. I really out. don't need to. I really <laughs> don't need to participate. But I guess I mean, you know. Well, we're gonna have yeah, a resident a uh, expert. You know. Yep. Yeah. Kurt oh, So I'm catching up with comments compared to pictures. That was Darren Hunt's tractor. We we that thing's got quite the lineage. Um, yeah. Tim said Hunt's had it, and then uh, somebody says the sorted nuts was Salamine's tractor. I thought. Right. Mm. Okay. Uh, no, yes. it was owned by the Hunts out of Kentucky. Hoffman sold it to Hunts. Yeah, we're catching up here. I'm sorry, guys. Where is Mark 
Gom Road from in Minnesota. Where you at? Does anybody yeah. know where Mark lives in Minnesota? Uh, Sox Center, I believe. Yeah. Sox Center, Minnesota. So. Sox Center. I think so. Mm -hmm. Dean Muddy's checking in from Stone Creek, Ohio. Dwayne Munch is one of the ones who called me today. So it seems like yesterday when I was with Mark, we were at the pool in Glenwood, Minnesota, when Mark decided to buy the Night Rider. I've been around that tractor since Mark and Karen bought it from Eddie. Now that's a good story. I like that's that. And that's the Night Rider that I put up on the screen. Natasha, what kind of like feelings and stuff does this bring up with you cashing all this stuff? Oh man, there's a lot of emotions. <laughs> it's awesome. Though. You, I like if it. If you start crying, it's okay. Larry cries every week after the show. Too, so I'm just all on crying. <laughs> you know, you know what? There's no shame in that. My father passed in 1989, and I expect him to walk through the door of my shop any day and say, "What's mm. going on in here? What are you doing?" Yeah. So. No, seriously, I love to hear stories about people's parents, and especially when it's pulling, and I can relate to it. My dad couldn't wind his watch without breaking it, and uh, uh, I got my mechanical ability from my other grandfather. It wasn't this side of the family, and uh, I tell you what, no, you share those stories. If you can think of them, you share them, please. That's Absolutely. what this show is all about. Absolutely. I, I kind of have one I need to share about Natasha. So There you go. We, we all worked for Zoom. I used to be a grease monkey. <laughs> we, all, we all work together. Zoob, I, sure. I'm not gonna lie, probably the coolest boss ever in the world. I always said if I ever have employees, I'm gonna be like that guy. But yeah. anyways, we always worked there, had a lot of fun. And then I had an old, I don't know, now you call it a junker. It was a junker <laughs> then, but we had fun. Zoob, Zoob built me a big old turbo. I had a 1650 Oliver too, and we put a P pump on it. And we were running around tracker pulling and stuff. and Natasha was working with us and she went with us. And one day we went to Correctionville. We were messing around. We stopped back through Anthem. I don't think she was old enough to drink yet, but we no. were uh, we were getting them for her. <laughs> and uh, she meets this guy, Brad Curtin, and he's actually standing here right now. They got married and had kids. <laughs> yeah, because alcohol, because no story ever started with somebody eating a salad. I had that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. yeah that's a story and a half right there how there cool how cool yeah, yeah. used to go with us quite a bit in nebraska state fair when we had the old oliver it, it absolutely was just like the one uh zub and eddie ran every other pass you were putting bearings in it and then I think I could get two passes out of mine before it would chuck a turbo out the pipe. <laughs> Zoop kept, Zoop, we were filling the turbos full of filing. Zoop kept plenty of turbo kits on hand. Every two passes, we just tear it apart and put one in on the trailer. <laughs> okay, so uh, Tim Blankets, for our resident historian tonight, says that he thinks yeah. this was um, Eddie's Black Magnum. Yep, that's yep. Yep. John Hoffman, right? Yep, yes. And this would have been John Hoffman. He thinks in Hinton, Iowa in 2002. Zub, is that Hinton, Iowa track? I, what's the story on that? I've heard about Hinton my whole life. And, oh, and man. Crowd, I wish they still somebody, had said, somebody said the track sucked. It was too far from the people, but it was a freaking party. Is that right? I can't remember what I've heard. Yeah, it was a party. Uh, <laughs> but it brought a lot of... No, the the track didn't suck. The uh -uh. track was uh, took a lot of horsepower, which was made a good show. Yeah. Uh, the one side was a big, huge bank. You could bring your own cooler, so you could imagine how everybody got into it. There was a big bank with bleachers on top, and then the other side had a bunch of bleachers, and people would file in there like mad. It was Larry, Larry, was that NTPA back in the day, Rich Wine? Did you go there, Larry? You been to Hinton, Iowa? Tim no, Blank, well, you got to, any pictures of Hinton? I've been to yeah. Iowa, but no, none of them you've showed so far, no. Okay, hold on. Kind of down just, enough. It was kind of down in like a riverbed, like yeah. in, in when you would go to the sled, they would pull you over this hill and down in there, and you went right in front of the crowd when they were pulling you to the sled. And then you turn around and come back out the other way. Okay. So here's some. So Tim posted on our beer money pulling team group. I just googled it. This is some Hinton, Iowa. I guess as of today, there's your hillside possibly. Yeah. There's the there's the bank and there was bleachers. You know, in front of that tree on top of that bank, and then on the other side was a bunch of bleachers. And yep, and then a corn fell right behind that or being filled. <laughs> yeah, and it, it didn't matter. It was the bathroom. It didn't matter. It didn't matter if it was corn or beans. Mike, it sounds like we need to resurrect an outlaw pull out there, buddy. So. 100%. I don't know how, but yeah. 
It was yeah. It was fun. Zoob, do you recognize that shot? Yeah. That'd be probably coming down here. Yep. It, that's the road that they would pull you down and right, uh, right to get there. down to yeah. the track. But yeah. Yep. And where the fence is is where the bleachers were, and you'd you'd get pulled in front of the bleachers. There's a little staging area in the back. Sure. They'd only let maybe one or two classes of tractors back there at a time. Yeah. But, there wasn't a lot of room, but it was it was fun and it was yeah well all when you can bring your own cooler you can imagine how the crowd got into it they were very uh ecstatic about things <laughs> yeah yes. how long I, since they've had a pool there oh, mm. how long probably oh, probably 10 years or 10, better i think yeah probably yeah but you know now it, that was kind of the only ntpa pool that was around that area for a long time Right. But now we have uh, Rock Valley, you know, we got a lot of stuff like that. So I posted a question on the Outlaw Facebook page. It's been a couple of weeks ago. And the uh, general idea was if you could bring an outlaw uh, pool to any any state, town or area, where would it be? And Hinton, Iowa came up in the comments a lot. That I one was said I I seen several, that several times. That was a strong response from the fans so jason you said you know that might be something we've only got like 52 hooks this year for the outlaws we have plenty of room for more yeah well it'll have to be a tuesday tim blank is first said this is 2015 so what what association would have been there guys and outlaw. 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 Yeah. outlaws yeah okay and then here's That's 2002 gorgeous. And this is my freaking one of my freaking most favorite freaking tractors of all time, the Stray Horse. So, oh, yeah. yeah, that's a nice tractor. Yeah, and in the background is one tractor getting pulled back to the starting. Yeah, right. Larry, is it the old Stray Horse a light pro now? I feel like. Uh, I believe it is. I, can't I think it's from Minnesota or Wisconsin. Um, I can't tell you who owns it, but I believe it is. Oh, Speaking of Oskaloosa, um, we used to pull there back in the day with East Central Iowa. My dad had the D21 called Blackjack, and Hinton's broke something on this Stray Horse. Friday night, and Hypermax was out there Saturday morning putting four new turbos on it. It went 372 feet Saturday night. Just Ooh. It was crazy. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, we were. Yeah, we were there that night that happened. Uh, Doug Baird, I'm finding his picture. Okay, he said this is Kurt's first ride. I'm waiting on this right now to come through. <coughs> this is your soap, the overdrawn. Is that your tractor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. I like this a lot. Somebody said they saw you know, a kid get carried you, into Hinton. <laughs> you Kurt Van Beek just tried to call me. I think he's trying to shut me up on uh, having a pull on Hinton. <laughs> yeah. well, right. Whoops. <laughs> Jason should start a podcast so he can have fun every Monday night. Yeah, yeah. we've been doing this for like idea. we've been doing this for like nine years, Larry. <laughs> My Monday nights have been taken up. So yeah, but probably had this about much five fun. four feet in that picture is when the timing gears went for about the twenty fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> she was working pretty hard until that point, though, right? Come on, yeah. <laughs> the picture made it look good. So, no, yeah. That, There's black that, smoke. That's the best. That's the best it looked. <laughs> <laughs> feet away. Mm. Some of the so, camera matter really like good was that. like the Bowling Green of Iowa, basically. Is what I'm. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. So they did a little deal there towards the end. They did that. They called it the Western Sweep. But it was Ottawa, Hinton, mm -hmm. Carol, Carol Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. Is there yeah. another mm -hmm. one in there? I think there's just the three. It was like. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? Yeah. 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 Our Ottawa Animal was Thursday, Carol yep. Carol yeah. Carol Saturday. Yep. Trof Kurt Coima says trophies were five feet tall. So <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Beers were tall and the trophies were taller. Right. Come to hit. Yeah, I have one of the last trophies that we got after my dad passed away. Um, Zub and I, my brother, all went to Spencer to the Clay County Fair and we. He went down the track one last time with it, and we got two first place. <laughs> yeah, we got two first place at, at the Spencer Ferry. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that was that was amazing. I, Daniel Bolton must be talking about the hillside. I don't yeah. see any dikes on the screen, so that must yeah. be a dike. So, 
Let's hope that's what it is. Yeah, it, it took me a minute. I was like, oh, well, like a levy. <laughs> levy. Everybody, everybody say hi to Don Slama. He's in Costa Rica on vacation. He's watching the Let's Grow Pulling podcast. So. Hi, Don. That's, that's <laughs> just a rough <laughs> duty, Don. Get a yeah. sunburn for me, dang it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Costa Rica. Um, so that's, uh, hold on. I got to get back up the comments. Sorry, guys. Can we take that dyke comment off the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Dan. Iowa. You say that. There, there's a town in Iowa named Dyke, and uh, they were they were famous for their belt Santa races out there too. So there you go. There you Cody Griffith. There, there was a, at least there was a vibrator race. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. They have those races in Key West. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a couple. Yeah. You know, Keep your motor running, what, Larry. <laughs> Somebody's calling me from the 712 area code. That's out by you, Kurt, right? Yeah. What's yeah, the other three numbers? 887 877. 887. That's, that's, like that's close. They want to be on the show. <laughs> when Larry had his birthday, and Matt and just Larry were out at Suma, and I was in the booth over doing the live stream, and Larry was kind of giving me signals through the glass, and I went on Most the live stream. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I said everybody text Rich Rich Richmond happy birthday. So he got a couple of text yeah. messages that night. So oh yeah, so that, I got a lot of text awesome. messages. Yeah. <laughs> but this poor guy trying to call you, just give his number out, Jason. Let's all call him. Yeah. <laughs> He's um, sitting in the booth. He goes, Why the hell is my phone going off the hook right now? I'm yeah, like, I have no yeah idea. Matt was there with me. Matt Matt witnessed it. And he kept Matt and I are trying to do a professional job of announcing the tractor pole, bringing up who's next, all the excitement, all the sponsors, and the distances. And he's in the room next to us going, What was the distance? I said, Buy a friggin' radio and listen to us. Jeez. <laughs> You know, back in the day when this super farm, you, we didn't have to worry about all that technology. You either went to the show and told your friends or, you know, you weren't there, right? Yeah, so that's right. It's interesting. Promoters had such a different time, right? It was posters on a wall at the local cafe and the yeah. local taverns, and and hopefully people had a good time and told their friends to come next year. Yeah, when, the Mobile, um, when they would do, like, the Mobile Fair, like the Woodbury County Fair, um, my dad's tractor would be on the flyer sure. numerous times. So mm. They'd send it out to, you know. Do you still have some of those on the wall? Restaurants, the placemats at the restaurant. I don't know if I yeah. don't know if I do. I might. I love stuff like that. I still have like my first sale bill, you know, from my auction, first auction I did. So I just wondered if you had the old posters. That's that's pretty cool. Check this out. Harold Phipps, 2009. Tim Blankisper is coming yep. in hard tonight. We love Tim. Yep. Timmy um, yep. runs all the social media for Thunder in the Valley. Rock Valley does an awesome job, so. Awesome. Yeah, Harold, Harold Phipps is a uh, NTPA and a PPL official. He and does the right act at uh, Rockwell, it, if I remember, Larry. Yep, he does. And he does uh, Hutchinson, Minnesota. And what? they actually brought him in last minute from Iowa to Bowling Green to be a fl flagman uh, at Bowling Green this year. Nice. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Okay, Cody Griffin says, spectators drink way more alcohol than the tractors at Hinton. I helped pull the tractors around there, total black. <laughs> well, if you ask Zoom, he'll tell you that's what alcohol is for. <laughs> yeah, it's for drinking. <laughs> yeah, you see that alcohol's for drinking and uh, diesel's for pulling or something like that. Yeah. I, think that's mm -hmm. I think Doman's Doman's had something like that on the Hurricane Alice trailer or the tractor. Somebody says Northwest Iowa Nationals NTP. I've seen that comment now a couple times. That must have been a sweep, maybe, guys. I think you mentioned that. Zoob, does that ring a bell? Yeah, but I think uh yeah it was the western sweep they called it that was and i think the hint and pull was actually called the midwest regional tractor pull something yeah, like that it was. Yeah, it was. um gavin gavrick brown says hey brother i must be one of larry's fans um <laughs> so, <laughs> parts, parts of the hoff parts of the hinton bleachers are now in haywarden and westfield okay oh, good Sweet. to know thanks kyle <laughs> That's good stuff. Go hunt them back down and get them back out there. That's what I'm thinking. Jason Skillen is one of the most super fans of all time. I don't think he's missed home in 97 years, and it's only been around for 50. Um, <laughs> his And his brother, you guys be careful, his brother, he'll weasel you out of a free hat and T-shirt every single time. Not Jason. <laughs> it's his brother. It's his brother. So that's still another brother there. But Jason says, in the day, you wanted to win Hinton, Spencer, and Des Moines. So that was – Zub, can you correct that? I mean – that makes yeah, sense that was me. that was right. Yeah, that was the three big ones. If you won there, you were 
king of the pile. <laughs> because Spencer that's where all the best tractors were. Spencer and Des Moines have been NTPA pulls on and off over the years, too. Yep. Well, I knew that. Sure. Yeah. Spencer, that's that's an outlaw puller has been recently, hasn't it, Jason? Isn't yeah, Spencer it's, a place it's the last, that we... Well, before Lufkin, it was the last hook of the year. Kind of mm. a lot of the points races in in Spencer. Uh, Justin Van Valkenburg, I think he's out of Michigan. He says yes, but Tony's the godfather of Super Farm. I think he's talking about Tony Sietzma would be my guess. That's who he's talking about, yeah. Yeah, the... Yeah. Uh, her Wolverine deer, Wolverine right? deer, Wolverine yeah. deer. Yeah, and, that guy and to answer that, that guy answer in Justin, Costa Rica in, he's in region two, in region two, which is Michigan, Indiana, part of Ohio, the very eastern part of Illinois and Kentucky. Yes, Tony Steetsum is the godfather, but not everywhere, just local. <laughs> it's a it's tonight. Should we should hand it out a map tonight, Jason? Yeah. You're too young yeah. to know. A map's actually a piece of paper that has topography <laughs> and cities and states and little lines that are roads on it. It's not like it's not like Siri. Yeah, hey Siri, any direct, any direct, hey Siri, yeah. any directions to Larry Richwine's house? <laughs> People's phones are going wild everywhere. <laughs> you know what? Here, a week or two ago, when I had tech school here, I, I had several of them come that had never been here before. Yeah. Are they going to come back? Yes. They were all oh, welcomed, no. and they all seemed pleased to leave. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> they they seemed pleased. Well, anyway, they left. <laughs> and then you, you, don't, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, Larry. So. That's right. That's but Kevin right. Davis is the Wayne, Nebraska promoter um, with the Outlaws. He says it was Hinton, Iowa, and Carroll, Nebraska, same weekend. Okay. So that would have been a hoop. So that would have been like, I don't know, Zoop, would that have been like, what, was the Outlaws around back then? Like, would they have been competing? No, with that, I think that was still uh, the NTPA. Yeah. yeah. Where Bush was pretty big back then, wasn't Nebraska Bush? Mm -hmm. Yep. But they, they, they in stayed in Nebraska, way. though. But them guys, you know, once we got the super farm going. Okay. Uh, they had sure crossed the river. They all wanted to pull in Hinton and. Uh, Ottawa and uh, you know with the ITPA. Yep, sure. Greg Lissetto, um, he runs the Outlaw Heartland Division now. I'm, I know Greg really well. He said the weekend of Ottawa, Hinton, and Carroll, Nebraska was a blast. So it sounds like a something you look forward to every year. So yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, they Morgan the the Aspen. They go turn the stray horse into a light pro. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking of, Morgan. Thank you. It's a, still an ag chassis light pro. Because yeah, PPL, yeah, right. Larry PPL is the only one who has the component light pro right now, right? Yeah. And TPA or Outlaws yeah, have a yeah. set. Yeah. Kevin Weber's checking in from Ida Grove. Mark Ulmer, oh my God, the king is in. <laughs> Boone, Iowa was with the sweep. Okay, so that would have yeah. been. Yeah, Boone was. It, uh, like a Wednesday night Boone. Thing, or was it? No, Boone was yeah, Sunday. Mark would know. Mark would know, yeah. Boone was Sunday, I think. Was it? Okay. I think so. Mark would know, but I'm pretty sure it was Carol and then Boone on Sunday, I feel. Somebody said, oh, my God, Don Slama, the legend. Hmm. Brian probably Cruz. Don said that. It's probably Don Slama said <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm sorry, Don. I didn't mean that. No, that was, I'm sorry. No, it was so funny because, Larry, that was your first PPL poll you've ever really been to, right? Was Hillsborough yep. last year? Yeah, the next thing you know, I'm working there. I was just going to say, Slama's <laughs> kind of got some pull, though, so that happens, so. Uh, had, I think he, I think he had a suggestion that I that I come to work there, and uh, several of the promoters that I had either worked for, like Mount Sterling and Salem, that I'd done NTPA events that are now PPL. I had a lot of phone calls from promoters, and Don Salama was the very first one welcome me aboard. So yes, nice. he's a good guy. The best thing about Don Salama is there's no, you know exactly where you stand in Don Salama's world. So I share that with him. I, I'm kind of that way. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, because I've told you several times, I don't really care for you much, but you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get Just in line, enough. Rich Wine. Get in, get in line. <laughs> um, this is cool. Tim Blankenspur just sent this. This is the Woodbury Woodbury County Fair Flyer. I have no idea where Woodbury is, but you guys will know. So. Smallville, Iowa. Smallville. Yep. Oh. Cool. <clears throat> the Outlaws have a poll there these days, I'm pretty sure, Moville. But yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be like my hometown. Yep. Really? Yeah, yeah it's like 15, 20 minutes cool. from here. Yeah, but I live like 10 miles from Mobile. 
Yep. Okay. That country act looks pretty special. 8 p.m. We can make it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the black magic on the flyer. Yeah. Oh, cool. I love it. Um, those, co- those country western singers might be dead by now. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of the match game on TV that was taped in like late seventies, middle seventies. And my wife comes in, she goes, "Why are you watching the match game?" I said, "Because all those folks are dead." And I'm just amazed that they're still doing that. But yeah, oh, um, check this out. Oh you- my gosh, <laughs> is that from Tim too? No, this is from Morgan Schulte. Uh, Moose's tractor pulling videos on YouTube. He's been sending me a lot of stuff. I'm trying to keep wow. up with all the stuff. That's cool. Yeah, that must yeah. be me. Right That's the hell Zub. Yeah. That's Zub doing that one. Zub, do you still pull? Uh, no, not really. Well, what do you mean, not really? You either do or you don't. Well, uh, during COVID, uh, I had an old uh, D19 Alice Chalmers behind the shop with a gas motor in it, and I had bought a combine motor. And, you know, you couldn't do anything or go anywhere. So, me and the guys at the shop put that, and my daughters. We put that motor in there and some buddies of mine and we put a turbo and two carburetors on it and <laughs> took it up to the governor and <laughs> so we've been kind of playing around with that. So that's fun. Do you have any pictures of that, Zoom? No, not on me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whose shop are you in? What? We who we shop are you guys in tonight? At my shop. Oh, tonight we're at oh. uh Paulson Auctions and Anthem. Kurt's company. Kurt, you still got all those big load, the the ones that grow in corn 2020. Do you have that auction yet with all those John Deere's? It closes uh, Thursday night at 5.30. It starts closing. Did Don Slama bid on anything yet? He loves them John Deere trailers. I don't know. Uh, w Titan 2 came today. Is, are they a big deal? On TikTok. Or that cool. TikTok guy, Ryan nice. Kelly. All right. Everybody take a deep breath. We have a compliment for Larry Richwine. Uh, Mike, can you hit the drums? Mike, can you hit the drums? <laughs> Todd Morris says, laughing my ass off, I love Larry sarcasm. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, here it is. That sarcasm comes from the heart. Anything I say about beer money mm. or beer phony or, or, or Jason, beer phony. Uh, it, it's, it is heartfelt, and I mean it with all my heart. He's kind of a friend of mine, more of an acquaintance and more of an annoyance. But hey, you know, Larry, Larry, Larry's sarcasm is pure Midwestern sarcasm. Somebody, uh, I'm getting a lot of screenshots. I've been talked about this week on social media with the launch of Full Pull Live and stuff, and somebody called me scam money. I was like, well, that's pretty original. <laughs> I thought that was good stuff. So scam money. Appreciate that. Phony money. Thank you, Larry. I don't phony. know where that one came from. Hey. Uh, Any anything I can do to help you, Jason? I'm here for you. Uh, Tim whenever I feel like, I, whenever I feel like I paid back for the camera, the audio <laughs> board, the microphone, and everything, I'll just disappear. I'm going to take it to the pawn shop. I've already got a bit of twenty dollars on the mic. <laughs> well, Larry, I got that. I bought that on my, my layaway on my credit card. I got five years of payments left. It's like three ninety nine a month. So twenty nine percent interest. I thought that's a hell of a unless deal. you've got the serial number recorded, you're going to never see this. <laughs> I didn't know you could add that stuff to an FHA loan there, Jason. Uh, no, it was I did a I did a third mortgage. Third, that's ah. where I got. That's how I got my Poland tractor. Third, got the fourth it. mortgage. No, the fourth there mortgage. it is. That's. <laughs> um, Matt <laughs> Ellenberger says Carol was a Saturday night. Zub, does that sound right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. And then Blankus says Ottawa was Thursday, Hinton was Friday, and Carol was Saturday. And apparently Boone and was I, Sunday. I'm pretty sure. There you go. Might have been yeah. Right. Zoop, what did you say you had a D19? D19 Alice Chalmers gas, yeah. Like that one? Yep, yeah, that's oh! it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that is from Tim. Oh, hell yeah. Tim's been my boy tonight. This Tim has been knows great. a lot. He's very knowledgeable. That's awesome. Well, no, Tim's awesome. Tim is freaking yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, Don't you that's why I said... <laughs> Hey, I dug that piece of tin out of the grove just for that. <laughs> That's where it's they got, run, right? <laughs> not side shields. It's got Larry. Larry would pass tech. That's got side shields. Yes, so. that, that passes tech. It at that time it did not say the ends ends had to be enclosed, so it was a side shield, not an end shield. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That is at uh, probably Bancroft, Nebraska. It absolutely is, and it's got Pioneer. There's a big sponsor there. They got the the signs yeah. right there for the for the yield. What are, I'm not sure what that field track or that pulling track yielded, but it's got the signs. So. <laughs> and I I think I got a well one time at Bancroft I got a first and a second, so I was pretty. And I had my youngest daughter with me, and none of them really thought too much of that tractor because it's so ugly. <laughs> and after, I got, not wrong. Not after wrong. I got a first place with it, she said, Dad, can I drive it back to the pit? So <laughs> I got a big kick out of that, and I let her drive it back to the pit. <laughs> of so. course you did. I'll, I'll, never for, you I'll never forget, like, I was still working for Zoob, and they just, just sold the Black Magic. And I always asked him, I said, you got a tractor pull? You got a tractor pull? And he goes, man, I tried an antiquer once here a while back. He goes, I was winding it up and winding it up. And he said, there was no smoke or no fire. He said, I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is a nice paint job by today's standards. What do they call it? Patina? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Rat rods. Rat rods. Yeah, that's my rat rod pulling track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I like they, use, they use those grain bin tins on a lot of bars and stuff. You were you were coming on to something there. Yeah, Dennis, you're ahead of your time. Pinterest. Pinterest I was fine. You were right. Greg was settled on the light enough. super stock in Hinton in 97. Carol was Saturday night. Kurt Coima said, Stray Horse Light Pro, Pro got sold to Thompson's in Minnesota. Thompson, okay, so Nagel must have sold that. This is like, this is like uh, our own history tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ottawa Hinton, Carolyn Boone, Western Sweep. Yeah, Oak TTPA. Okay, Outlaws. I'm keeping up. I'm catching Alan up with comments. Andrews. Yeah, there we go. We're catching up. Jason Skill and Jason Nagel with the stray horse work for David Henderson. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Aaron Shriver says, first time I met Eddie was at Husker Harvest Days. His 966 was on display at the Abilene? Abilene? Machine? Yeah, Abilene, Abilene Machine booth. Yep. Yeah. So the 966 would have been the black tractor, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Old Black Magic? We built two of them. The first one was called Black Magic, and then we built another one that was called the Knight Rider, and the Knight Rider had a 540 motor, and we ended up selling the Black Magic to Mark Gamrod, but we swapped the side shields, so he got the Black Magic with the Knight Rider side shields on it. Oh. I then, swear like, I got a picture of both of them on a trailer somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I put it up earlier. I know yep. I did. Well, that's yeah, when we hauled there. them up to Minnesota one time. I think we pulled that wind of Minnesota. Hauled them on a semi trailer. We got up there and the whole head there fell out of the pivot on the front end and it was laying on the the front end was laying on the trailer and the <laughs> weight bracket was holding the tractor up. But we got it fixed and ready to go for the show. Oh man. Love it. Brian Cruz says no cages. Larry, roll cages was mandatory in 98. Is that right? 99? The accident happened in 98. It was suggested we have them on in 99, and they had to be on and inspected before they ran in 2000. Did you have one? No, no we, was we one never one. had a okay. roll cage. No. no. Jason, Jason, go back to the picture of the Black Magic with the roll cage on there. You were putting it up just a second ago because it – it's so interesting, yeah, in that time. So look All at this those, roll cage. Was that AccuFeed? Larry had those big, long cages like no, that? No, not like that. I call that a cage. It would seat a family of three. That's the most <laughs> dangerous kind of cage you can have. I mean, when you're in a roll cage, you need to be in there tight like this. You don't need all that room to flop around. And I don't care how, how tight you have the harness, all okay. that room in there. They thought they had to have room to move around yeah. and drive it. Well, you don't need to drive it. You just need to steer it down the track. But that cage yep. right there is very dangerous to be inside of that one, even if your straps are tight. I Those yeah. worry me almost as much as no cage at all. You don't well, see many, any, Larry. You don't see those much anymore, though. I haven't. No. no. Right right at the beginning, they were really trying to figure out, you know, what which direction they were going to go. I think it was Chuck Lee or someone from around here local had one, and his was so tight, and they didn't really know – where do we put everything? He, he was actually reach reach, outside. Yeah, he would reach his arm through the cage. Nope. So it's That's like they bad. were either so small and barely cover you, or they were these huge space shuttle look like you had a cab on the tractor. So in those early days, they were really figuring out, you know, how how this was going to pan out. Now our eyes don't even hardly notice them anymore. 
But you know, Michael, no older than you are, you probably don't remember when we had outhouses and tractors with no cages. I mean, come on, be honest, Mike. <laughs> I I can my first tractor pull. I was I can almost remember the pre cages days. I can remember the the, the specific memory would be um like Lustig's tractor. Right after it, uh, right after it left Missouri and went out east, and I can remember it coming back, pulling and making Missouri without a cage. But no, it was most of my memories are with cages. Okay, well, I've I've already given you enough heck tonight, and <laughs> and, and I, well, actually though, Jason, when you think about it, I got him from being that talking almost as much as you did at the truck show on the live stream. I mean, Mike. God, Jason never shut up. I mean, we're trying to watch a pool. Anyway, I mean, Matt talks fast. Mike talks all the time. And Jason just talks. And I'm just saying, and I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, this will be my last show. And I really appreciate being a part of Let's Grow Pool. His one fan came out for his final show, folks. Where's the encore? It's been great, Larry. Yeah. Yep, Larry's been fired, so we're good to go. Oh, <laughs> He's in the penalty box. So. Um, oh, there he is. <laughs> so He's this is, oh, I'm sorry, that picture I had up, uh, Blue Earth, Minnesota, 2021. Oh, okay. So the Knight Rider still got that big old cage on it then. So. Yeah. Yeah. That would probably be what, Larry, a UPM tractor, UPM United Pullers of Minnesota? I'm sure it is, yeah. Okay. That about has to be, yeah. Gotcha. Um, yes, Tim Blankensburg can he can be on the Let's Grow Pulling podcast whenever he wants because Larry's seat just became available because he just ripped on me publicly. <laughs> That's the seventeenth time I've been told today I talk too much, Larry. So Larry, Larry and I have a unique um friendship. I'm gonna call it a friendship. Larry calls it something else, but I don't know his friendship. No, it's great. Uh, it's friendship. Woo <laughs> um okay, here's a good one. Remember him taking Eddie's tractor to Toma in 1997 for kind of the last hurrah. Who's saying that? Who is, who is saying that? I'm trying to find that? out for you. Hold on. Matt Hart, our resident uh, Facebooker, he's going to check this out. Yeah, I'm a little slow to it tonight. I got my well, Elon in the internet. Uh, in 97, I borrowed Alan Andrews. Semi. Alan Andrews, that's who what? it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. or Alan took us out there, and yeah, we pulled it at Toma. That's awesome. Yeah. That was that was another one he always wanted to make, but uh, ninety seven was maybe the first year for Super Farm and Toma. I'm not uh, sure. I'm not That's sure. It was a regional class with the uh, WTPA of course, but I I think they actually pulled. I don't know. I, I ninety seven or ninety eight would have been the first. I think Super Farm yeah. up there. Yeah, and he wanted it to be there, so. Yep, Alan hauled us out there on his trailer. Cool. I was Steve Hoffman says I was a friend of Eddie's at one time. He had tried to get Coors Brewing to sponsor a new built tractor, and it was going to be called Fire Brood. There you really? Go. Wow. Natasha's learning all kinds of shit tonight. I am. I told you I was younger. <laughs> yeah. He. This he, is awesome. Uh, I like it. It's awesome to hear. He sure he tried is. a lot of sponsors and different things. He he never gave up. He was always trying new stuff. Terry Benson agrees with me. 98 was the first year at Toma for Super Farm. Look at that. You're two for two, Larry. Well, just because <laughs> I lived it don't mean I can remember it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Look at this picture. Wheels um, up. Come on. Cole Lundell says, got a picture request to share of my dad. He said Eddie built a lot of parts for this tractor. So that's Lundell's tractor. So Cool. This is neat. Love the old Firestones. That's so. so cool. Eddie, were you kind of work or Zub? Were you working for Eddie back in the day, or were you partners? How did that all go down? Well, I started working for him in uh, February of '97 or okay. 80, '87. Excuse me. And Natasha, when, did your, when did your dad <laughs> pass away? What year did your dad pass away, Natasha? '97. '97. Okay. Yep. yep. So ten years. Yep. When did he get diagnosed with cancer? What year? Um, had to have been. It was before. before it was, was before born. I started working for him because he was in remission then. Yeah, but it came back in uh, probably ninety eight, maybe. So yeah, so, or eighty nine. Yeah, so I was. Ever since I was a kid, he had had cancer. He was sick. Um, okay. you know. 
Cancer so, study. But yeah. he still did the tractor pulling. Um, we went every winter for our Christmas break. We would go um, snowmobiling. I mean, he didn't oh, really yeah. show he was sick, but he would still do stuff with his family. He awesome. was strong and, yeah, amazing. Sure. Yeah. And he used to actually really like grinding his own tires, which... Yeah, I remember that's that. A, that's a tough job. Yeah. Yeah, only mini rod pullers like that nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he Where the, the hell did that come from? Yeah. Only mini rod. Jesus. I mean, oh. Uh, Carl. Oh, yeah, Carl. <laughs> Carl's Kurt's brother. <laughs> Where did, what? I'm trying to, the comments. This is great, you guys. Tons of comments tonight. What was he referring to the bibs? Do I got to bring another picture up? Or? It was the picture of the B19. Yeah. 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 The overalls on. There it is. <laughs> Those are fireproof bibs. There you bibs. go. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fire suit. Yeah. That's a fire suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Snoop, I think you're going to be signing autographs tomorrow at lunch is what I'm feeling. Like. <laughs> what What do we call this D19? Does it have yeah. a name? The Dirty D19. <laughs> dirty. Is it D-I-R-T-Y or D-U-R-T-Y, Zoo? Hmm. Uh, D-I. D-I, D -I. okay. Yep. yep. Could be the yep. Barn metal, metal Special or the Galvanized uh, yep. Special. Or Strong something. Barn for sure. Matt Ellenberg show that's got to be bankrupt. I think Matt Ellenberg has a 1206, like, hot farm, doesn't he? Yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah. I think he does. I recognize that name, and I recognize because I had a 1206 for a while. Marcus Louch says, I was at that pole with Zub. Yeah, that's my nephew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terry Benson says, Wayne Muller Cage. So that must be on Knight Rider today, I'm guessing. Right, right. Uh, made Wayne Munch him. says, was that picture of both tractors taken at Brian Miller's and Sock Center? I think he's trying to say. Uh, it could be, yeah, yeah, because. Uh, Can you bring it back up again? Ed was yeah, buddies with Brian and Miller and That's the Polar Boys. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. Scott and Wayne, uh, Ladon Peterson, Mark Gamrod. Yeah, we just pull with them guys quite a bit. The one where they're both on the trailer. Yeah, I got so many, Natasha. I can't find it anymore. Okay. <laughs> I still love that old Oliver with the wood grill. Whoop, we got a love note there. I was going to say, be be careful flipping. No, that's a, that is at our house. Before, yeah, so, because we used to, we had uh, Morton buildings in the back. That's your house? Michael, that's not Rock Center? That was, yeah, that's at our house. See it, Zoom? The Morton building. Michael, Michael, did you notice yeah. how much better when Mackenzie's doing it rather than? Her her thing says right at the bottom, best beer money employee. I mean, you know, the yeah. little deal well, at the bottom speaks for itself. So, you know. We're, we're learning tonight <laughs> just because you own the company don't mean you can run the company. Jeez, Undercover dude. boss. Undercover. He's... <laughs> <laughs> And the, I'm and the joining surprises. forces. Yeah. Jason, I'm joining forces with Larry. You can't beat him. You join him tonight. <laughs> it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a terrible idea, Mike. It's not a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Terry man. Benson, Knight Rider Wolf. Yeah, Wayne Muller. Morgan says Super Farm pulling started with Tomo 97. Norm Cavan made the cover of the Polar magazine that year. What was um, that 460 or that 560 you had a picture of back there? It looked like a light uh, super stock. I want to know how that Paul in here. sent me that tractor. I here, let me call Mackenzie quick. I sent her home. She, you know, she worked all weekend out the Mac trailer with internationals. I said, take Monday night off. I can handle the show. You know, from now wrong. on, I'm just, just I was wrong. wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, let's <laughs> reporting fans. Wrong. That little tractor he had the picture of was the little britches tractor. I bought that. I don't remember <laughs> I what year. <laughs> I don't remember what year I had that. I bought that from a guy in Dubuque, but it was Larry Lundry's old tractor. And then that next picture was one a cousin of mine took in Toma when it busted the rear end out of it. But when I had it, that was a 560 yeah, rear end. But when I had it, it was 656. Couldn't have anything to do with those tires. Look at those things. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's cool. Some, you know, Jason, there's a button. It's got like a little box and an arrow where you can twist stuff. <laughs> You might want to hit that because I'm going to get dizzy trying to look at the damn picture. We look we look like Larry's German Mid Shepherd here when you hear like, something funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, got, I got a German that's, Shepherd sitting over here in the truck or in the in the la Lazy Boy, and she's going, Dad, is that picture right? No. It's not. 
He must hear something. <laughs> Matt, yeah, um, I know you got to get up like at three in the morning to go to work. I want you to say goodbye to everybody. We're going to keep going with Natasha and Zub. And yeah, this has been great, okay. guys. Thank you so much, Tasha, and sharing some of the history. Yeah. That was really a fun, uh, fun thing for all of us, really, because you know everything's so modern. Mm -hmm. The world's going so fast, and I just love seeing these older pictures and videos and hearing some of that. So, um, thanks for letting me be a part of the show. And like Jason said, that uh, three a.m. wake up call, I got to keep smiling somehow. So I got to go to bed, but I'll listen the rest of the way. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you back here next Monday. Try Thank this; you. it'll yep. help you try this. Uh, now, Larry, you said I talk fast already. I don't think you need me on no coal train. Yeah, That'd no, be a bit scary. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. You, Have fun on the rest of the show. You guys are the best. See Have a great night, Matt. You're the man. Okay. So that, that, that 460 had to have been a light super, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I was. A little alcohol tractor. Mm -hmm. So in, in a world of super farms, we snuck in some spark plugs in here a little bit. That keeps it interesting. I do it just to irritate Zoob. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say too much. I've gone to the I've gone to the dark side so, with the D nineteen. So, oh, orange is the dark side. You know, I everyone always well, says that you know the green track or the dark side. Oh, the spark plugs are the dark yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I don't hear orange getting called the dark side too much. But yeah, well, that's burning gasoline. That's not burning methanol. So, you know, is that the eight oh six they were talking about? Yeah, Cole Lundell's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was more of a farm stock hot farm class. And then Craig, Craig Nielsen, I think he can you post another picture of the 806? Is this the 806 you wanted, Craig? I'm assuming. I think so. Todd Morris says the old rat rod D19. I like it. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's the dirty D19, Todd. But Alice Rat. Yeah, Alice Rat. Mm -hmm. Dave Whelan. Uh oh, coming in with some super farm. Lots of memories. Mr. Mm -hmm. Whelan, my last yep. excuse. Yes. You want to talk about a pretty super farm tractor. Uh, Tim Blankensburg says, thanks for putting this together. No, no, this is all Kurt Paulson's fault. This is all Kurt Paulson's fault. So. <laughs> I love it. Um, Terry Benson says, yep, he was correct about Toma. First year, Norm, Norm won at the first year. Mother's Nightmare won at 98, and I won at 99. That would have been Brent Lennarud's Mother's Nightmare, right? Lennarud family, I think. Yeah, should have been Mother's Nightmare out of Austin and a 99. Okay. What was Terry's super farm called, Larry? Do you remember? Was it the Haymaker? Hayride? Larry, you're muted, buddy. <laughs> I'm muted because you didn't want to. Oh, no. I, uh, I <laughs> honestly can't tell you definitively what it was. That's a question that uh, I'll pass. Red Storm. Red Storm. Okay. Uh, Broken Toma, 99.9. Colin says, yep. Kim Jocelyn. Zub would still be pulling if he could find a good diesel mechanic. Somebody's ripping oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kim. Thank Kim. <laughs> what was Kim? Kim had the old uh, Extreme Pleasure. Logo. Yeah, The Kim, one he started with. Kim built that tractor. Yeah, because then... you, you did some stuff on it, didn't we? When I worked That's the one Van Beek spot? Yep, yeah, that's the one. Yep. Kim's the one who built it originally, and then Van Beeks bought it. Is Kim pulling today? Um, I think he dabbles in uh, some antique, like hot farm and some hot antique farm. stuff too. Yeah, right. yeah. You would you ever let him drive the dirty D nineteen if he asked? No, and he's not yeah. going to now. <laughs> <laughs> good call. Good call. I want to ask Natasha if she remembers the worst night in our tractor pulling history when we went to Hutchinson, Minnesota, and I drove the tractor on the trailer, and the, the trailer came up, and Ed was mad because he thought I forgot to hook the latch, the latch on the trailer, but actually what happened, the ball broke off, <laughs> and... You know, of course, it was already probably midnight. Yeah. Well, sure. And Ladon Peterson knew a guy in Hutchinson, and we went there. And, of course, we couldn't get the broke-off ball out, so we had to torch that out. And then we couldn't find the right size ball. And I think by about 3 o'clock in the morning, he came up with a buddy of his, had a trailer court, and he had a 
quick hitch with all these balls on it, and we robbed that off of there, went back to the guy's shop, <laughs> welded it on, went back, hooked on the trailer, and it was foggier than heck, and your dad got tired of driving and couldn't see, and we stopped. And I don't know where we were, and it got so <laughs> hot in the pickup that I got out. We were in a town somewhere, and I got out and laid down on these steps with my duffel bag for my pillow. <laughs> I slightly remember this. And I wake up in the morning and here's all these people <laughs> walking by me going to church. And I was I was sleeping on the steps of a library. I was at least you weren't the steps, library. At least you weren't at least you weren't on the steps of the church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did anybody drop like a five dollar bill or spare change and just you know <laughs> dropped any money? Oh, Sir, are you homeless? No, I'm just a tractor puller. No. <laughs> it sounds like Larry telling stories about that poll in Canada when they he's told some stories about uh who are those mod guys that are always uh who you talked about all the time. Joe Stocks. Joe, Joe Stocks. Stocks. Yep. Yeah, sounds like Saint a Joe in Quebec. I've got a lot of stories. That's two or three episodes combined. But uh, <laughs> No, I've I've slept under the trailer a bunch of places, and you know you drive all night, and, you, and it's too hot in the truck. Like you say, you crawl under the trailer. My cousin was with me one time. He's gone now. God rest his soul. Woke up next to a stray dog. Stray dogs all curled up next to him, and we said, "Wow, Dean, is that your date from last night?" But yeah, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, we've all done it. Uh, well, I'm sure Jason has it because you know roughing it to Jason's when the HBO breaks in the Hilton. <laughs> uh kurt let's talk about your new tractor that you just bought um pulse nest spark plugs again for 2024 so i mean i know what's going on but tell yeah, everybody but you still do turbos if we need them so he can't be too upset he's still got to be kind of nice okay fair enough uh, i bought rod Pasoda's crazy horse nice cool light super egg yep that's gonna be fun to watch you this summer yeah it's be learning experience i'm sure Bend it and send it, as Larry Richwine would say. Just yeah, there's a lot of pictures of that tractor around the country on one back wheel. <laughs> <laughs> they ran really good at Wisner this year. I could, I promise you that. So yeah, and I don't know. Rod is is crazy. He's the chillest dude you'll ever talk to. But I guarantee, you if he's on a tractor, he's as crazy as anybody. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's wide open. Um, that light, that light super stock ag class is, I mean, when I started hanging out and doing a little work with the outlaws this summer, that, that is a class that they have that's kind of unique to them. Um, and that, is, that class is Western. That's like how one of my buddies described it. He said that thing, things can get really unique in a hurry. That light super ag, where you've got to run that ag rear end in it at about 6,000 pounds, depending on your fuel that you use. That class is fun. Yeah. That class is really cool. He's got big shoes to sell rod ones. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's um, no, uh, I'm going to be, there's no letting out of it. I mean, it's going to mm -hmm. have to stay wide open or I, I won't be able to live with the comments. <laughs> Kim Joslin said he'll have to get shots to pull that AC. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to get shots. <laughs> what kind? Fireball shots or? <laughs> <laughs> if he's a puller, probably. <laughs> show we never know what we get with that crazy horse no that's great pretty glad rod let us have the opportunity to buy that tractor though those don't just come up for sale mm -hmm. every single day and i mean it was dang near as sad as a funeral when we pulled out the driveway with that tractor i mean rod's had that tractor for i'd say 30 plus years so he's he's in trust even though you bought it he's entrusting you with it to carry yeah yeah i understand i hate to guess i probably actually have more hours on my phone talking to rod Pasota than my dad has on his 1972 40 20. <laughs> <laughs> cool that's awesome well, if you need a driver this summer kurt i know a guy we got to get, are you? <laughs> we got to get that bigger cage, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of experience you got? 
There's my picture. <laughs> yeah. There you go. go. There's my resume. Yeah. <laughs> my resume calls it. Yeah. Speaks for itself. Have fire shoes. We'll travel. <laughs> Zoop, what would have been, what was the biggest payout you guys ever got winning a pull? Oh, oh, man. Maybe 500 bucks, maybe. Nice. There was more trophies than anything, right? Yeah, back then. Back then, it was a lot of yeah. trophies. We, but, you know, once we got into the NTPA, then that, yeah. that paid a little money. Right. We had a, we have a lot. Well, I think my brother has a lot of trophies. The bad can, part of it, the bad part of it is that NTPA don't really pay much more than it did back then. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They haven't gone up much. No. But uh, uh, I've got some of those four and five foot tall trophies out here in the shop. And every time one falls off the shelf, you know, it goes in the dumpster. And I think, why are you throwing it away? And then the other side of my brain goes, you won that 40 years ago. Damn it. It's time to throw it away. But yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, Lissetto you know. says Rod pulled it once at Ravenna with the steering line reversed. So Yeah. Yeah. I heard that story, too. I also oh, yeah. watched Rod Pasota one night in Carroll, Nebraska, chained to the trailer wind her up and light it right on the trailer and i said what are you doing he goes well the damn thing won't run on the track i thought i'd see if it run on the trailer <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's a whole nother episode i think i think right there so oh. natasha what does what has pulling done for your family i mean i feel like you know so we want to talk about your dad tonight and then we just kind of got off on tangents but really yeah. to pay a tribute to your dad tonight what what has pulling done for your family and I mean, look at, you know, talk about the friendships and stuff over the years. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, after um, he passed away, kind of, I drug my husband. He was my boyfriend back then, but I drug him to every nearby you, track. You, drug, you drugged him? You drugged him? Yeah, well, you know, I I took him to these tractor pulls that I wanted <laughs> to do. Um, yeah, so did that and... Um, I will go to, you know, as many as I can in the summer. Um, I love going and it brings back so many memories and it's just, I get like those, um, you get like that rush, especially the super farm, of course, cause it's got, you know, a special place in my heart, but, um, I have like this adrenaline rush before the tractors go down and, you know, I always wish I could have been a part of or had, you know, a tractor, but. I have the the history and you know behind me and stuff. So have you driven a pulling tractor ever? No. Zoop, make that kind shit up. Wait, hold on. Okay. Kind <laughs> of. Don't you remember the last year after your dad passed away? I would put one of your girls on it and we just push it off the trailer. Do you uh, remember? No. You don't remember doing that? No. Maybe that, sound, that sounds safe. That sounds safe. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> well, I wanted him to drive it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome, yeah. but you know. You should. You should. Maybe you, I mean and, 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 and you don't have to do it in competition. Do it in the afternoon when they're when they just got the track built. Say, hey, can we make a test pass? And you don't have to build boost and blow smoke in the air, but nobody can relate more than I can on you need that feeling. Because tractor pulling is not it can't it's like it's like cancer. You can get it in remission, but you never get it out of your system. Yeah. And I'm glad you're enjoying going. And and uh, I didn't know your dad, but for, for your dad's sake, you should drive just once. What the heck? I know. That'd be awesome. Well, how would you like to drive the dirty D19? <laughs> I would probably drive that. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a date, then. Oh, man. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> Oh shoot, and Samantha Schultz! I think we need to talk Zoop into building one. I think I think it's no, been done. Oh, that's an idea. <clears throat> She's probably got enough pieces laying around to put one together yet. I would usually guys like that do so. Yeah. Want to drive the weapon against Kurt Paulson? Who's that? I don't know. It's got to be Elmer. Oh, oh, there, there, there you go, go. <laughs> there. there you go Natasha. <laughs> My husband calls me the tractor pulling queen. So, I love it. Yeah. Did, did, you, did, did you meet your husband through tractor pulling? or? No, I met him after a tractor pull. 
So, so he needs no, a dose oh, of it. Kind of, if he yeah. follows That's you exactly. around long enough, he'd surely take the hint, wouldn't he, that you need one? <laughs> I know, right? Well, he wants, he wants a drag car, so it's kind of a... <laughs> well, you know. I should win, everybody, right? <laughs> everybody can drive a drag car. Get a copy of the National Dragster and pick out one of the ads. My God. <laughs> We're talking truck and tractor puller. We're talking something that the ne no other sport has a guy that built it, uh, built the engine, built the chassis, sharpened the tires, and then drives it. Everybody everybody else's sport, oh, I call my clutch man. He fixes it. Or they're going to put pistons in it between rounds. But, I mean, come on. This is this is, this is is a heartland of sport, my God. You know, mm -hmm. seriously, somebody should let you drive. <laughs> Jason. I don't Jason. know if they're worth a lot of money, so they'd have to really trust me. Well, you know what? I You're trust you. I do <laughs> worth a lot of money. <laughs> oh. What's the farthest you guys, uh, Dom Trumball wants, or Trollball wants to know, what's the furthest way you guys went for a pull? Uh, oh. In Iowa, probably New Vienna, because that's about as far from here as you can get and still be in Iowa. Oh, really? We used to go up into Minnesota quite a ways, like uh, Appleton and Sock Center. and That's just south of the cities, right? Yeah. 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 And out into Nebraska. I don't know. I remember late nights going back home. And if you don't have the tractor on, if you did not have it on the trailer, right? The gooseneck trailer, you could feel it oh, <laughs> pulling. And, no, yeah, no sleeping for you. It was a rough ride. <laughs> what was? I mean, that back those were days, like you said, Zoo. We slept on the steps. That one just open goosenecks and trucks, yep, right? Yep, open goosenecks. Which was awesome because everybody could see this awesome sure. tractor, oh, yeah, and it was yeah. like, hey, cool. They'd go <laughs> by you and they'd put a thumbs up, and you know, it kind of made you feel like a celebrity. <laughs> and every year for. How many years on the 4th of July, we went to Gibbon, Nebraska. It was a day poll. And then on the way home, we'd drive home and everybody and their dog, you know, throughout the country was lighting off fireworks. Sure, sure. Yeah. Every small town you drove past had fireworks going Yeah, around. yeah. yeah. It was All the way home. Huh? Been there and done that. I hate that cliche, but been there and done that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I remember when food, you guys were kids, uh, you used to play with Norm Cavan's kids and yeah. Alan Andrews' mm -hmm. kids, you know. It didn't really matter who was winning or what. No. You guys were just this little gang that hung yep. around together. We had a and, little pulling gang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was like in Broadbent this past weekend. RJ Simon and Brandon Simon had their kids in there, and there was, it was – there's footballs flying. <laughs> it was crazy. Yep. <laughs> you would still watch them pull, but you would go mess around after that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be a kid. Doug Baird says Natasha traveled then traveled with us for a couple of years. So. Yep, I did. Yep. Good stuff. Um, Zub, I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts of like where pulling was maybe mm -hmm. 20 years ago to where it is today? Is it did you ever think it'd get to this where a pro stock could make 5,000 horse out of a single charger. I mean, what are your thoughts when you, when do you ever just go as a fan anymore? Or are you always thinking? Yes, about I do. Yeah. I go to rock Valley every year and different, different pulls when I have time to allow it, you know, one year, probably in like 93, Ed bought a 3.6 turbo. Mm -hmm. So we could put it on and pull at the Spencer fair because all they had was pro stocks. Yep. And <laughs> I think at that time, you know, if you had a three nine, that was big time. And wow. we just had a double disc clutch, so you know, it just smoked the clutch about yeah, sure. about two seventy. If the clutch was done, but <laughs> yeah, we thought that was big at that time. Well, now look at it, you know. Yeah, no, I think Larry, what's a big pro have nowadays? Is it a six and a half? Is that what you said at the farm show? Six foot and a half, or six foot, six and a half <laughs> inches. Yeah, that's what PPL is limited to six and a half. I'm not sure what NTPA has done. I know it was six inches uh, when I left, and I, I don't know if they followed suit or not. But PPL is six and a half inches inlet maximum. So what, uh, Zub? What's the closest pull to you nowadays? Like a bigger pull on the oh, outlaws? Mobile, 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 yeah, Mobile. 
Lamar's is kind of my hometown now. Okay. But, you know, in this area, Rock Valley is the big one. Yep. You mm -hmm. want to go to. Nice. Well, I want to meet you this summer. So that's my Okay. Point. Well, we can arrange that. Yeah. Yep. I'm hmm. going to be there too then. Sounds good. We're going to have a. <laughs> you want to see some of yes. and Voyage on the Dirty D19? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to see. I want to see it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to see her on the weapon. Who was offering that up? That was Mark Omer. I looked on the beer money uh, oh, right. on the group. That was Mark Omer that said, uh, hop on the weapon. What? So, Zub, Zub, I got to talk to Van Beek, but maybe we can have, um, maybe can have, maybe we can have Tasha drive the D19, like scratch the track or something like that. Okay. Yeah, talk to, talk to see what Bauer says. Oh, Kevin. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Kevin won't care. Kevin will say whatever. Okay. Whatever, Jason. <laughs> Hurry up, get this done so we get this party started. So. <laughs> so, Kurt, you know, this was your idea, and this has been awesome. I, this has been so relaxing and fun, and I love all the stories and the pictures and stuff tonight. And it's good to tap back into Larry's memory bank um, back in the day. Um, what, I mean, sitting back, Kurt, how old are you now, bud? 44. So this would have been your your heyday, right? High school, college, running around. No, yeah. Shit, I think right? I had the Oliver when I worked. I think when I worked for Zub, I was ninety nine. I think it was ninety nine. So I'd have been like, I'm, it might have been two thousand when I worked for Zub. I've got socks that old, guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> might have been two thousand. I think when I worked for Zub, so I was twenty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's prime time because I started working for Ed when I was 21. So, yeah, I was like, man, I don't know. I'm kind of embarrassed of this Oliver, whatever. I was like, I got zip strips everywhere and all this stuff. He goes, that's what your first one's supposed to look like. <laughs> that's how you learn. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. As long but as Zoo nothing. Boys, Zoo Boys, like, that thing was a turbo launching deal. I don't know. I think it just had so much metal in it all the time. It just never lived. Zoo Boys kind of always had a turbo for a guy to keep him going. <laughs> Zoops, Zoop, Zoop's got a toy. So, Zoop, do you do a lot of high-performance stuff then, or what kind of? Well, what's your um, I uh, mostly dabble in these local guys that are hot farming stuff. and Yeah. You used to do a ton of the super farm stuff, though, yeah. back then. Yeah. But it's hard to compete with the hearts and all them guys and nowadays, you know. Right. Yep. No, that's great. That's but great. You learn everything from my dad. Yeah. So everything yeah. he knows about, you know, injection pumps. injection pumps and everything, he learned from my dad and now he has his own shop. Mm -hmm. So cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good friendship to have. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good friendship to have. Yep. Well, guys, we're at an hour 37, so I think we've, we've, we've passed our hour up. Um, Tasha, thank you for sharing your dad's story tonight. Uh, Zub, I'm so glad you came on because mm. there's no way Kurt would have told good stories like this, so I'm glad you made it. You were just <laughs> you just got back from vacation or something, right? Did you fly in today? Did you just get back last night? Uh, yeah. This morning? Or, yeah. I just got back from uh, Honduras wow. from a mission trip. So. Oh, wow. Cool. That was kind of cool. cool. Yeah. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah. What kind of tractors do they pull over there? <laughs> I only yeah. seen two tractors. <laughs> a John Deere and a Case IH, oh, and they weren't pulling yeah. tractors. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, Natasha, Kurt, uh, Zub, thank you for sharing your story. I hope to uh, see, obviously, Kurt a lot this summer with Outlaw mm -hmm. TV, but I hope to see you guys at Rock Valley for sure, okay? Please come yeah, up and say absolutely. hi. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Thank right. you guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, guys. you too. Bye bye. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Well, that was fun, Larry. Yeah. Yes, it was. This just in. I just got a text message from the Bramer brothers. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. They, they were at Sonny Leonard's shop, which Sonny's passed, mm -hmm. but his son in law and daughter run it now. Mm -hmm. And they were at that at Sonny's shop this morning when they opened, and they're on their way back now with a motor that's got fresh bearings fresh valve springs, a new injection system, and been run on the dyno two passes just today. They're on their way back home. And the, it says we're getting ready for that Pullers Championship. I was nice. just going to so, say, I know, I know right where they can hook it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they, oh, I know. Anyway, they, uh, they're they on their way back from uh, Virginia, and uh, they just checked in with a text message. So, 
Awesome. No, I saw that Jason had put something up on his Facebook. Bullers yeah. are doing such a better job with social media across the board. Yeah. That's what, yeah. when I talked about Promote 365, yeah. I wasn't telling every YouTuber in the country to line up, slide the track, and make full-class videos. I was talking to promoters. I was talking to pullers and saying, let your pullers, let your fans know where you're going. Um, mm, right. And promoters post about your events all the time. It's important. You got to keep, just got to stay top of mind awareness with your fan base. It's a lot, a lot of right. fun. And to, to pull back, to pull back the curtain, and this is kind of what I was writing about this morning, to pull back the curtain and give immediate feedback and, and information to the fans. And I mean, don't be shy to use these resources. So Bill Voorhees put up a picture of his run from um, the, from the Mac trailer winter nationals this weekend and just said like, Hey, here's what happened. Here's right. what I did. Here's what I didn't do. Here's what we're going to do next time. Like I, I eat that stuff up. Like that is so cool. You know, do we miss the magazines for sure? They were really neat. But if you wanted an inside scoop on Bill Voorhees run, you were going to wait six weeks and then pray that the oh. editor talked to Bill and got that information. And now he can hop on his cell phone you know, and sit there and say, Hey, here's what happened, you know, and that's that's really right. cool. Yeah. So promote Mike, 365. Mike writes an article for us once a week called This Week in Pulling. And we just he keeps it relevant a lot of time to what's happening, maybe what we're talking about and let's go pulling. I put a link to it in the comments right here, but running a straight pass, you know, towards change. And he has a nice picture there down the ramp at Louisville. And uh, it was right. neat neat to see all of that there this past weekend. So go check out your climb. <laughs> Sorry, I climbed on your shoulders there for a minute, Mike. But you know, you're, you you ran around Jason so much. Jesus Christ, it's bound to run <laughs> no, off. No, I don't I, think it'll ever rub off on me because I don't need that. But you, I came, you know, I came by this honest. Honestly, this is not rubbing off on Jason. When I met Lori Bauer, I was up in the announcer's booth with Lori one time, and she looked and she goes, "Oh, great, we've got two of them now." She <laughs> says, "Richard," she goes, "There's another one." So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got news for her. They're everywhere. You just got to choose which one you want to sit next to. Yeah. Hey, it's Kurt Van Beek's fault. He he hired me, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, well. No, I want to wrap up Mac Trailer. It was awesome. First class yeah. night with many rods. Ken Benny was a favorite on full pool. Six to one. Uh, Guza laid one out there with the Grandpa's Disaster. Grandpa, I think that's what he calls it, Grandpa's Disaster. Mm -hmm. 256 had a 10-foot lead for quite a while. Old Mr. Hurt came up with B-Bear or Little Bear. I'm not sure which one of the Bears. Went 257, had the lead, and then Abby Leishner was 9-1, to one, last hook of the class, and put it in the sand, 259 or 250. Just got what? a couple feet, and that place went wild. It was Will awesome. that be her last run on that tractor? Yeah, so Sounds Mike like her Sumner well, and Brad you know. Kaufman bought the chassis, and Shannon, Shannon asked them to keep the – so they could – Shannon asked for them to keep it together so Abby could mm. make one last run on it, but – the Bohr family still owns part of it. I don't know the whole story on it, but they were messaged. The Bohr family was happy. They were messaging mm -hmm. me Saturday night during the poll. And they were home watching it in the Netherlands, and they were having a great time. And then Pro Stocks, RJ Simon came out, you guys. He let out of that, Larry, 10 feet ahead of that mm -hmm. sand pile. It's still new. Oh, I, I, I was watching, yeah. That non-complimentary code that you sent me, I, I was watching. <laughs> Chase wouldn't let me give out any complimentary codes on this. I one. know, but did you tell him? But I only paid nine ninety five, and everybody else paid nine ninety nine. I did. I did somehow. I said Larry. Larry saved four cents. I don't know how it happened. Four cents discount. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're being serious. That's great. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, Larry's oh, never yeah. serious. Oh yeah. Nine ninety five. I thought for sure they're going to reset the sled. I really did. By the way, um, I did too. He yeah. hammered it, and then. Wagler came out, went 241, and then the kind of couple came back, and then Kevin came out and did what Kevin does. The house that Masterson built, 247, and then Parrish went, got in the pull-off too, and then um, and the pull-off just just buried it again. He went, he hit, he touched the sand again at 232. See, I was watching Larry, and I know you were watching, and I was announcing that sand pile kind of get pushed back farther and farther. So the distance, oh, yeah. is, you know, in my mind, I'm going, oh, how deep are those tires in? And then somebody radioed one of the NTPA officials radio over and said, you know, the sand pile is getting so far back. Because one of the distances came up. We're like, is that right? Mm -hmm. I remember like, yeah. Yeah, you and Rom were like <laughs> kind of taken aback. You're like, oh, we got to double check that. But it was right. So mm -hmm. um, and you then thought, the mods. You thought, you thought well, Ike Zary was back again, didn't you? Yeah, oh, man. Man. I thought, that's a one of one. <laughs> And then uh, mods came out, and uh, Dylan Owens laid out a nice pass with his four motors, four engines, excuse me. And did you guys see the new Thorn uh, 
Tape on the Un- side of the- Unpopular oh, yeah. opinion. I think it's freaking cool. I know that is like goofy, but like if you made that the actual thing, I actually think that is neat looking. I would so, right. I would leave it. Like I think I got the biggest kick out of it. I think it looks really cool. Like not even being facetious. Like so I think Friday afternoon, cool. Hope and McKenzie from Beer Money were doing a live. And Hope made the comment, all these John Deere guys, nobody puts a name on the side of them anymore. She can't tell them apart. And then That's they get to true. they got to uh, Dylan's tractor, and you know he doesn't have anything on there. And his his grandma said, Well, you guys take care of it. So we went and got a, a yellow electrical tape, because that's what Tom said he wanted. And Hope and McKenzie actually spelled all that out on there. And they said they would leave it on there if if he won and he got second. So we thought for sure we had it. But old Brandon Simon does what he does. So Brandon Simon swept both sessions at Louisville, guys, one Wednesday night, won the finals, and he won again last night and or Saturday night in the mods. And um, that was great. And then the semis, Chris Wood with the class act, um, 225. He's hard to beat. No matter where he is, he's hard to beat. He's from Shreve, Ohio. I'm not sure where that is, but I got a chance to talk to him a little bit. Um, I had my announcer hat on Friday and Saturday, and I talked to pretty much every four. I got some back history. And then what you do, Jason, is to go, hey, Siri, where's Shreve, Ohio? And, you know, and then she'll, you know. Then she'll tell you. It's amazing. The Simons mod right now. So 2023 was kind of the year of the river rat in pulling and, and, you know, it's obviously still up there, but 2024 early on has all the markings of being the year of the Simon says modified. And that's not to downplay what he did last year. Last year, of course, he, he won the grand national uh, modified um, and did really well with that mod. But that thing right now, it's, unless it just really, really likes Louisville, but it's on a, it's, it's on a different playing field. Like his, Larry, he is, he is dominant. That's, that's from the long camp, right? That's one of the old Mav TV tractors. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Bill Voorhees has got one of them mm-hmm. and, and their mm-hmm. tractors, the other one, I don't know which one's which I'm sorry, but yeah, the first they're, thing they're both, was, they're, I thanked him for coming modern. on the show with us. I thank Bill yeah, for coming modern, on the show with us. What's that? Larry? Modern machine. They're modern machine chassis is what they are. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I saw Bill, and I said, thank you for coming on the podcast. And he goes, it was we had a lot of fun. I'm, you know, it's nice having Larry on there. We could, you know, somebody that really knows who I am. And I said, yeah, no problem. We keep him around. We get money from the state, you know, to have old people on the show. And he then, um, he said, where's that young kid? I want to go measure his turbo. He was talking about Spencer Rook. Yeah. So that was right, pretty funny. Right. That was yeah, pretty he cool. texted me after the show last week. He goes, that was pretty cool. And I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ought to tune in once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah. good. So. No, and then I saw Ham in Louisiana was going on for I think that was for Mid South. Um, yes, yeah, I saw yes. that. Mm-hmm. Waterloo, Iowa had a garden tractor pool that Brandon went went to from our team. We're going to New Richmond, Wisconsin, uh, April fifth and sixth. They got a garden tractor mini rod pull up there, super pull, and then then it's really just we'll I'll be talking about the Polar Championship every day. Um, Larry, kind of what's what's going on in your world the next six weeks or so, buddy? Well, I've got a couple of tech schools to do, and then uh, I think it's uh, April 13th, 14th, or 12th, 13th. I can't tell you which off the top of my head. We're at the last NTPA event in uh, Florida, which is, is at the Clay Green, County, Clay County Fair. Green Coves, Green Coves, Florida or something, Larry? Green, the town is Green Cove Springs, Florida, just south of Jacksonville, and it's the Clay County Fair, and we pull Saturday and Sunday there, and we're the finale, the last day of the fair is Sunday. And okay. it's got a roof over it. The track, the track area is 400 foot long under roof. And if it rains, it don't matter. And uh, it's, uh, That's it's a cool. great event. That's a great event. Yeah. Somebody said, why don't they pull tractors in Florida in the summertime? And I said, have you ever been in Florida in the summertime? That's why. Yeah. Because so, it's hot. No, I, <laughs> they, have a, they have a great show there. Yeah. Thanks to everybody. We had thousands of people watching on fullpull.live and uh, the app. A lot, of, a lot of action on that as well. Hopefully, next time we talk about full pull, it's going to be real money gambling. Um, that's kind of what I've been told. That's coming soon, you know, before the, the Grand National season started. So, I want to talk about Who that. Who won the one. thousand? Yeah, say, so how'd, you, thousand how'd thousand. you guys do in the competition, too? Did oh, you get any, Larry? I, I turned my $1,000 into $431. <laughs> did better who who than won I did. the real money when the smoke cleared? Who won the real money, uh, do you know? D-Walk. I don't know who that is, but they made they turned their 1000 into 43000 So. Really? Yep. Cool. Cool. But um, it'd be interesting to talk to them sometime and see how they do that because I bet you, even if you pick the four winners, 
per each class because that's all you're getting paid out is just the winners. And yep. if you just split it, if you just split it 250, 250, 250, which is what I did, I bet that wouldn't yield that high of a result. I wonder if they know something we don't and they put five hundred dollars in one class and then a hundred in another and so I, they must know the odds and play the odds a little bit better because there's well, there's got to yeah. be even more strategy to it than just splitting it evenly like i do every time and then you still have to pick the winner so you almost got to pick the four winners and have bet the right amount on each one of them well i mean it's it's you got to play along you like i make my picks before the show that i'm always busy during the show you know if you pick abby leichner in the first class and she was nine to one you probably threw a couple hundred on her now you take that money and you go all in on Masterson. I, so the last time I played, I didn't know if you could do that. I, yes. Are they updating between classes? Because yes. there was yes. one point you was just kind of, uh, you had, uh, like it didn't pay out until the whole show was over. Yep. No, no, so it's, it's after each it's, class. That Well, yeah, then that's what you do. You you throw the you throw the whole horse at it early, and then if that hits, you roll it into the next one. You put a 1,000 yeah. on Abby. I'm a Susan Terry's talking about that. They must have ran light limiteds down in um in Hammond would be my guess. He said a yes, couple light did, yes. didn't like the new three by four by four turbos. I haven't had a chance to really do much looking around than anything else. So down there. Well, so. the, uh, the mid south pullers. I mean, each state organization has its own set of rules within the PPL rule book. Uh, besides everything else, the safety rules is PPL, but they have the right as their state club to limit turbos or whatever, but, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that was new for the light limited supers down there. And they went with a smooth bore charger and some other things. And it was their first time out, you know, with that new class rules. So uh, I'm sure somebody didn't like it, you know. Todd Morris said uh, he turned his thousand into a minus 28. So you, <laughs> owe, you owe Chase fake money. <laughs> yep. Um, I stayed at zero. <laughs> we, uh, I asked OJ, um, I said, hey, before the farm show, I said, please reach out to the top five uh, that did well at the farm show. And I want to interview them on the Let's Grow Polling podcast yeah. about you know, what their strategy was. And then I don't know if he ever did or not. And I honestly forgot to follow up back on it. But it'd be fun to hear how some people it would. A lot of people came in the booth, you know, at the farm show, Mike, and booth 3194, where you are uh, virally right now, yeah. And yeah. told us how they did it. But no, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So I don't see much activity behind you, Michael. Nobody's walking by while you're there. Are you there we're after out of, hours? We're out of after we're out of coal train. We're out of coal train. We yeah, we that's threw, what brought we, all the people in. We, yeah, we're okay. Tony okay. Reed left. You just missed him. Yeah. So I want to wrap it up here pretty quick. But Larry, what do you do at tech school, buddy? Can you kind of tell the fans watching what tech school is? The tech school is uh, we have a PowerPoint presentation. And uh, we go over the new rules from the past year, all the officials that were officials last year too. Uh, PPLs every two years, it's mandatory they attend. It's a lot like a school bus uh, refresher course that school bus drivers have to go to to see if there's any new regulations or whatever. And it, uh, uh, they get to hear me and Jonathan or whoever else is there. But uh, it's, uh, it's what's new, what's happening, why it happened. What brought this new rule on? I mean, every rule book, I don't care what organization it is, each rule has a name or an incident on that rule. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. happened to cause that. Uh, yes, tractor pulling can be proactive, but most of the time there's a rule that has a name on it. And uh, But no, it's basically a refresher course. They all have to be certified. That goes through SFI a test, a written test, even though it's open book. But it's it's good because it teaches you where these items are in the book. They actually have to do a written test of 40 or 50 questions. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, each one of them, I actually learned something because it's an open forum. And we talk back and forth about what they've had to experience and what's going on in their area. But it's, uh, it's standard procedure. I did it for 30 years for uh, NTPA, and now I'm doing it for Pro Polling League. So Nice. No, I just kind of always wondered what you did all that. Um the UNOH Diesel Club rolled through Broadbent, and they got to kind of see everything. That was North University of Northwestern Ohio, bunch of right, young, right. the Diesel Club. Um, they were in there with Marvin and Dan Schrager right. and all the NTPA guys, and they got to meet Bill Voorhees. They got to meet uh, Rhett Parrish, Philip Parrish, and they were pretty pumped about that. It was neat to see them. Yeah. There was a group of about 15, Mar 20 kids. So. Marvin's daughter right now is currently attending that university. And, oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, he had a little tech school thing up there, seminar for him, and and then they got to come down to uh, the truck show. But yeah, Marvin's daughter attends that university. Uh, 
Larry, Robert Miner wants to know, what's it take to become a flag person? That's a good question. Basically, it's being in the right spot at the right time. Uh, you can be a super fan like Michael is turned into an announcer. But at the same time, uh, most, of, most of the officials we have are either frustrated pullers from the past <laughs> or there's somebody that's always come with somebody mm -hmm. and was there yeah. and understands it. But as far, I mean, you can, anybody can attend a tech school, but that doesn't mean you'll be issued a license, even if you take the test and pass mm -hmm. it. Okay. Uh, but it, do, it does mean that your credentials are starting to build your resume. And if they need you, I mean, I got many guys that are like full-time flagmen now that were basically on the list of people that wanted to be someday. And somebody either got sick or retired and they got called up. So it's well, the minor leagues, you know, minor league, major league type thing. That's how you got tell how you got your first announcing gig. We still got a ton of yeah. people watching. Maybe that's yeah, cool. Yeah. It's a great so, story. so I mean, and and you know, I like how Larry said, right place, right time, and and just be around it and and be aware. But definitely exactly like Larry's saying. So I bumped into Jason in Chapel Hill, Tennessee, which is fun and interesting because it's you know nine hours from where I live, and God only knows how far it is from Wisconsin. And so we get to chit chatting and just kind of talking, pulling and everything. And I, I mentioned to him, I said, you know, I've, I've always wanted to be an announcer. I feel like that's something that I can, you know, get my sink my teeth into in this world. And he's like, well, OK, like we're going to we're going to find you some opportunities. You know, he said, what's the next pool you're going to? I said, well, I, I want to go to Wisner, Nebraska. And he says, well, I'm announcing at Wisner. We'll we'll kind of work you in slow. We'll put you in for a class. Look for look for my call. Sounds great. Can't wait driving home or I'd have maybe just made it home from Tennessee. And he calls me like a day later and he says, what are you doing tomorrow? I says, well, I'm, I'm nothing. You know, I'm a teacher. It's summertime. He says, um, the, the weather's hot. We've got a pool in Sac city, Iowa. And it is, it is crazy hot, like dangerous hot. And the announcer that we have lined up for up there doesn't feel comfortable. Doesn't think that he needs to be out in that heat. He's like, if you can get your butt up to Iowa, like we will put you on the microphone. And I was like, Buddy, give me an address. We're on the way. And uh, that was kind of how it played out in Wisner, too. We ended up having some other situations arise where they they had need for it. And you just kind of work your way in and you be that guy on the phone call list. And my you grandma, know, yeah, my, my grandma passed away and I had and I had fainting camera people because it was 115 yeah. degrees. It was, the heat. <laughs> so I was the, running cameras and Mike was covering me. So the heat, the heat played to my advantage this summer and, you know, being being around. Uh, I don't know if I want to say paying your dues. You know, I don't know if I, I, I feel like I just kind of jumped in and kind of went straight to it. Uh, but being around yeah. the sport, you know, being around the sport and having, having that infection in it. And, but yeah, wait Larry, by the tell, phone. <laughs> Larry, tell your story. This is good. I don't know if you've ever heard this, Mike. Tell your story, Larry, your story. how you got your first Which announcing one? gig. Your first announcing oh, gig. Oh, well, mostly because the announcer didn't show up years ago when <laughs> I was pulling. Yep. But the bottom the bottom line was uh, I was pulling, and of course I was active in the club and secretary and treasurer of the state club and on the NTPA board and the, in, the national club. And somebody didn't show up, and they had some guy up there going, and up next is Larry Richwine on his <laughs> yes. modified call the weekender. And so yeah. I made a pass or whatever, and they said, uh, Richwine, you got bullshit. You're and and I was still have an auctioneer license just like Matt does. Do you, you mind going up there? No, I don't mind. So I crawled up there. I think I actually at that time didn't have on a fire suit because we didn't have fire suits then. But I went up there and, and uh, started talking and the rest is history. But the most fun story I've got, probably what you're talking about, Jason, is uh, uh, Alan Worshburn's story. Yes, I love that one. Love it. Yeah, my I was announced in all the Indiana State Fairs, uh, demo derbies, tractor pulls, etc. And my father passed on August 21st, 1989, uh, right after the fair, I came home from the fair, Linda and I did, and uh, he passed that night. And so the next morning I called the uh, director in charge of entertainment at uh, the Indiana State Fair. And I said, if you got somebody that can cover my polls tonight, because my father passed last night and I really probably should be taking care of him instead of coming to the, oh my God, yes, Larry. And I said, well, get somebody to cover it. And when the fair is over, I'll come up and get all my junk and stuff over because it was like the last weekend of the fair. Long story short, too late. Uh, I went back up. We'd taken care of dad's all his arrangements and got him in the ground and, you know, cried and said bye. And I'll, I can't talk about it no more. I'll cry again. Anyway, long story short, again, too late. I went up to gather my things from the office at the Indiana State Fair. And I said, I want to meet the guy. 
it was like one, it was the last day of the fair. I want to meet the guy that did my pull last night. Uh, two nights he actually did them. And they go, well, go over to the other side of the administration building, go into the PA booth and, and ask for Alan Warshburn. So I walked in there and I didn't know him from Adam. Never, I'd mocked him for years. He was the grounds announcer when you walked around and you'd hear every hour on the hour, welcome to the Indiana State Fair. State Fair time, 11 a.m. I mean, you know, but I, I had mocked him for years and didn't know he was the guy that covered my butt. So I go into the PA office and I go, I need to meet the man that did the damn tractor pull last night. <laughs> and he stood up on the other side of the room and went, that'd be me. And I says, well, I'm Larry Richwine. I want to thank you for covering my butt. And we've been great friends ever since. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, – I'd probably – at that time, I was doing most of the tractor pulls in Indiana that Hoosier State had. Okay. And I did some national events, too. But, yeah, uh, I was still pulling while I was announcing for the last three years I pulled. So. Do you still have – did you ever have a T-shirt of your modified the weekender, Larry? Oh, yeah. I had T-shirts. used to say Indiana's only jet, and I had a jet tractor. Yeah. Uh, Indiana's I think there's one up in the other building. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got t I had t-shirts printed and, and I had t-shirts printed of the two road. I had two road. I started with two small block Chevrolets and then I went to one big block Chevy with a tunnel ramp for one season. Then I went, went a single blown Chevrolet then a single blown road act and then two road acts blown. And then I, uh, gas turbine. And then I laid out a year, and then I bought Old Sparky, light super stock, Grand National Point champion Merrill Smith had, Old Sparky. I went to do his clutch inspection, and uh, we got time for this story? Yeah. Okay. I went to do a clutch inspection, and Linda was showing horses, and she was showing at Camp Atterbury. They have a grounds type thing and a horse show grounds, and it's just south of Indy. Well, Merrill Smith lives, still does, in Franklin, Indiana. And uh, just south of there, about 20 minutes. So I dropped her off, horse trailer and horse, and got them situated. And I said, I'm going to go do Merrill's clutch, and I'll be right back. Okay. So I went down to do his clutch inspection. I get there, and yeah, I'd known him for many, many years. He and I served on the NTPA board together. He goes, Larry, I'm going to sell you old Sparky. I went, no, 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 no. I said, I don't need to buy a super stock. I don't know anything about turbochargers. I, I don't need that. Well, no, but... I'm going to make you a deal you can't refuse. And I went, oh, because I'm a sucker for a deal. Anyway, <laughs> an, hour, an hour and a half later, I pulled back into fairgrounds at Camp Atterbury, and I had a flatbed trailer, bumper trailer behind me with old Sparky on it and a pickup bed full of parts. And Linda's in the ring showing, and she's watching me come in the gate like, what the hell has he done? And so I stop up by the ring, and when she comes out of the ring – I said, I got to take this home. I'll be right back and get the trailer and you and the horse. Anyway, that, that was a lot of explanation on the way home. But, yeah, I bought Sparky, the trailer that was under it that he had built for it, and a pickup load of spare parts, and I didn't know jack about turbochargers. But I learned. I ran it three years. And the last year I owned it was actually the first year I worked for NTPA. It would have been 93, and George Everett's son, Scott, he run it for me, and then yep. uh, I wound up trading it. Uh, I wound up trading it for my first motor home. George had an old Winnebago, and he goes, "Well, you need something to go to the poles in if you're going to be tech, you know, the the head tech guy." So I traded Sparky for a Winnebago, and then the rest <laughs> is history. Here I am, uh, Larry. George is still on the WPI board, right? That's George, right? Yeah. Yes, That's he is. Hockey. Yes. Yeah. He's Good up deal. for election in March. Him and Roger Weisong are up for election. George is. Uh, 84 years old, I believe. Anyway, uh, he's either 83 or 84. And, Ken, uh, yeah, I learned, I learned that Ken Venny's 84 this weekend. Yes, yes, he is. And I don't know if George is going to run again, but I hope he does because, you know, they don't so much anymore, Michael, but they used to teach history in school, mandatory history, <laughs> especially high school. You know, when you got to check, you know, what classes you wanted, they still taught you history because, I was under the impression they taught you history so you would learn from other people's <laughs> mistakes, right? Hopefully you wouldn't do that stupid stuff again. Well, George is the only person left on the WPI executive board that knows the history, knows what NTPA, mm -hmm. how many hundreds of thousand dollars they were in the red when WPI was formed to bail it out. He was there when that was all bailed out. I was too, but I had hair. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> if they lose George off the board, Unless they take 
time to look in the minutes or know somebody mm -hmm. that will share that with them. Mm -hmm. They're losing a vast source of knowledge. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the only reason James keeps me around. And I am shy. But nevertheless, uh, you need somebody that knows the history to maybe guide them on saying, well, now we tried that once and here's what happened. But uh, no, he's up for election and so is Roger Wysong in March. Uh, well, it's April meeting. April 20th is actual meeting, but they're turned okay. once. So, but yeah. I'm curious how that worked. So, well, good. So next Monday night, guys, I'm going to be live in Farley. Okay. I know Larry's got text. Do you, can you come on next weekend, Larry, or you have tech school? Uh, first. Next, I can be on next weekend. It's the weekend after I'll be traveling. Okay. So I'm going to start the show at seven, guys. I'm going to do a combo down and dirty with the Badger State Tractor Puller slash Let's Grow Pulling. We're going to start at seven. We're going to start out with Jason Round, who won uh, Pro Stocks in Louisville. And he mm -hmm. pulls Badger State. He pulls a little bit of everything, but he pulls Badger State mostly because it's close to home. And, and then, then the Simons are going to roll over at eight o'clock. We're going to do it from Jason's shop. So that could be a good two, three hour show. But you guys can be ready to go at seven. Mike, I'm not sure what you got going on next week, but um, I, I'm a big fat maybe on that one. I'm I'm driving the school bus to a track and field meet, and it's one of those where it gets started around noon, and I guess it just depends on how fast the track kids are and how fast the track and field tech and officials are. I guess if that would be here's how a, you would describe a quick, that. A quick, a quick school bus story. My father drove a school bus for 40 years. Had he lived one more day, Michael, he would have drove mm -hmm. his first day of his first semester of his 41st year. Long story short, remember when the fan bus passed you and you used in the car and the one kid had his ass cheeks pressed against the back window? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that, that was me. Okay. That was me too. So my daddy drove the bus and he'd look up in the mirror and just shake his head. <laughs> he didn't even bother. He's like, oh man. <laughs> well, and, and and of course, this was all before they had padded on the back of the seats and all that crap, you know. And he, and the kids would be loud or rowdy or something. I'm I'm talking when I'm like first, second, third grade. And he'd look up at the mirror and he'd look at me, get my attention, and he'd go, and I'd go, okay, daddy. And I'd hang on to the back of the seat in front of me and he'd tap the brakes. <laughs> just like hauling cattle, you know, if the cattle are being rowdy, and you just tap the brakes on that truck. But yeah, you can just see their heads going. <laughs> but I, I'd go and he'd hit the brakes and everybody's head but mine. I, I don't know if anybody lost in his teeth, but they, they were metal bars. There was no padding on the back. Of I, the I love that you and your father had this unspoken understanding agreement. This is that's one of those where like dad says he loves you without saying it. Like, all right, son. Oh, yeah. You know what's yeah. coming. Hold on. Oh, the, rest yeah, of these, up, the rest of these kids are getting it. <laughs> yeah, he'd look up in the mirror and go, yeah, I go, yeah, okay, dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. man. Awesome. All right, man. Well, everybody have a great week. Um, again, just a great weekend at Mac Trailer. Thank you to everybody that played along and watched. Larry, appreciate you, buddy, for all that you do. Michael, same goes here. Thank you. Great article this week. Check it out. BeermoneyPullingTeam.com. Click on the blog. New new, new article every Sunday or Monday. Depends on what's going on in Mike's life, but we appreciate that. So next Monday night, we're going to start at 7, and we're going to be in Farley, the pro stock capital of the world. Darn near the polling capital of the world. <laughs> Simons, I asked RJ, what classes are you having in uh, Farley this year? Everything's like last year, but we're, we don't have a mini anymore, so we're, we kicked out the minis and we're having they the just, semis. And they, uh, just, they just open up their garage door and they've got <laughs> they've got a pull right there. Like I've always said, you could have you could have just the oh. Simon the Simon family reunion invitational. We'll just have a pull with what we have in. For sale and running and owning right here. If it's just whatever's on the lot, you could have fifteen I, to twenty hooks. I knew I knew their father very well, and uh, Roger and I told him many times. I said, you know, your daddy'd be really proud of you. You're doing good, mm -hmm. and they are. They're doing that's good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So that is anyway. awesome. Well, that's Larry, old, Larry, we always kind of let you. We always kind of let you open up with your funny lines. Give us one more funny line. Oh, I don't know what it'd be. I've I've shared so much jocularity tonight. I'm getting tired, but you know, I did drink one energy drink because I still have a supply. I technically have 22 more shows where I'll actually be holding <laughs> a cold train energy drink. Yeah, Mike. But I don't know. Larry, Larry's tired. Mike, what do you got for us? Give us something witty. Uh, 
Something fun and witty. I don't know if I have anything fun and witty. Just kind of, I like how we ended. Talk about how you got there. Don't take anything for granted. If you're ever at a point where you're waving a flag or you're announcing or you're on the Let's Grow Pulling podcast, uh, enjoy every second of it, but don't take it for granted that you can't be there either because, you know, you keep this thing running. I always said, if I can announce one tractor pull, if I can announce one pull, I will have died a happy man. Uh, it's a disease. I announced one pull and I said, you guys are, you guys are going to have to pull me out of this booth. That one pull is never going to be good enough. So uh, don't take anything for granted, in, including the fact that you think you're not supposed to be there. So if you want to wave a flag, you get on Larry's uh, list, or if you want to talk about betting strategy, get got, on. Larry's got two lists, Mike. Got to be careful. You got two lists. Get on, one of get on good, the, one the, the green flag good, list, not the red flag good list. Good column. <laughs> there's a good column, and then there's a Jason <laughs> Schultz beer money column. <laughs> Have a great I, night, I, everybody. See ya. Let's make some noise. Good running. John Deere, Animal Deep Nile, coming up. We got one right behind you.